ओके ओके सो वॉट वी कैन डू इज दैट एट दी एंड ऑफ द वर्कशॉप ईच वन ऑफ यू कैन सबमिट योर रिसर्च प्रपोजल और रिसर्च आइडिया आई विल गिव माई ओपिनियन एज टू हाउ टू कैरी ऑन ऑन दिस रिसर्च फॉरवर्ड बट लेट मी टेल यू ऑफ लेटली दैट मेनी पीपल माइट बी डूइंग अ क्रॉस सेक्शनल रिसर्च now when i say cross sectional research you are collecting data on all the variables at one point in time and and uh, you apply some model testing or let's say you run sem either cb sem or pls scm and then you try to report your findings and you come out with theory but of late you see cross sectional research okay it's fine i'm not criticizing cross sectional research but if you can do a a, a two stage study or let's say a two wave study or a longitudinal study then reviewers take you seriously i can tell you from my experience like uh, i have been submitting um, I, i i i completed my phd from pondicherry central university so uh, i am just submitting one paper to i initially submitted to basic and applied uh, social psychology uh, a journal in us and and they rejected it citing it's a cross sectional study and you can't test mediation so of late uh, the opinion that i'm getting from uh particularly from the editors and and they are not very impressed if a study is of cross sectional nature though i am not critical of cross sectional study but they want a, a study where where it could be convert it, it could be conducted over various time periods maybe a longitudinal study or maybe an experimental study is something that that they are looking for because whenever you conduct a study there has to be some novelty there has to be some newness in your study or uh, let's say uh, if you take all the constructs which are which are there in use and if you try to find correlation between those constructs for which lot many knowledge is created or much knowledge is created then that paper does not carry too much of weight so the basic idea is to inform you that that take a topic where where you can bring some novelty in your research yes okay so so let me begin let me share the screen so uh, the there are uh, lot many plans that i have for you and the six days is enough and i'm sure that if we focus these six days we will definitely be on our own toe yes so let me share the screen uh, can anybody uh, just inform me is the screen visible hello hello is the screen visible yes yes it's visible yes, it yeah okay okay so now uh, uh, let me talk about the reading reading material that has been shared with you so this was the link that was that was shared with you and you if you open the link you'll get all this material so first of all i have uploaded couple of books yes so close to seven books i have uploaded on on pls scm so uh, uh, there are some handbooks and and there are some conference material also in that but this is the book which i would strongly recommend all of you to read it and this is the third edition of the book and it is a primer on partial least square uh, least square structure equation modeling pls scm third edition so this is the latest ed edition so whatever doubt that you have related to pls scm it will be clarified if you read this book thoroughly so i strongly recommend each one of you to read this book a primer on pls scm yes then secondly again i have uploaded a book on discovering statistics using r and this is one of the a uh, beautiful book written by professor andy field and other professors are there and uh, he has given his uh, uh, commands his syntax and his opinion of of on statistics and how to use or how to run statistics using r by the way r is an open source and free software anybody can can download it so couple of books i have uploaded again this is the very popular book the most popular book as far as uh running pls scm using r is concerned so this book was released just two years two or three years back i think in 2021 and and this is known as partial least square structure equation modeling pls pls uh, pls scm using r so here the authors hair halt ringel sarstedt dangs and somya re they have talked in detail about a a package called sem in r it's not seminar it's called sem in r so it's a beautiful package now if you if you talk about this package seminar it's a uh, it's a multi purpose package it can also perform cbscm as well as plssem so it's a wonderful package and if you read this book 
you will get lot many insights and even command syntax are there our syntax are there you can simply cut copy and put it in your r script file and you can run your pls sem analysis it's a wonderful book in fact throughout this workshop the six day workshop i will be relying heavily on this particular book and i would very strongly insist and recommend each one of you to read this book by by professor hair at all it's a wonderful book which has been shared with you and by the way this book is freely available on google scholar you simply type seminar package you'll get this book this book is in open source anybody can download it and anybody can read it and i have shared one more book with you it is structure equation modeling with pls using stata and r so again uh, again this is a book which will con contain few of the syntax which you can borrow and which you can which you can read it so couple of books i have shared with you so that you can be on your own to once this workshop gets over and this is the practice data set by the way this is the corporate reputation data set which is there in the uh, seminar package itself so i just downloaded that data set and i have, I have uh, given this data set to you so we will be using this data set not today not tomorrow but day after tomorrow when we are performing pls scm in r yes okay so again so data set is there and i will be uploading few more data set for you to practice yes things are not over then this is the r syntax again this is the r syntax which which i have written it i need to download it i'm not going to download it right now but you can download it in your machine then there are some of the reading materials that i've shared with you which will help you to 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 produce your analysis or write your analysis again i'm going to share uh, more reading material into this particular folder particularly journals from a category or for that matter a star journal where if you read those articles it will give you a lot of insights it will give you a lot of sense as to how to perform pls scm uh, when you are using it in your in your research yes okay and this is the workshop agenda so let me discuss in brief about the workshop agenda before i proceed uh again i very strongly recommend all of you to attend all six days workshop in total don't miss the workshop again you will be getting the recording but but listening to the recording uh, i think it will be very tedious and very taxing it's always better to flow with the flow and uh, talk to the resource person whatever doubts whatever queries you have and again i would be very happy that if my session is more of a dialogue and not of a monologue i would be very happy to address your queries and concerns uh, let me tell you that that uh, i have developed some best of friendship by conducting such kind of workshops there are people who are still connected to me by the way one of my friend kiran she is there in kg somaya she is still connected to me uh, felix is there he is still connected to me so there are a couple of people who who have been connected to me through all the workshops which i have been conducting so uh, this is a this is a win win workshop and we I, and i try to develop a long term relationship with people and ultimately uh, we we all should benefit and and overall the research community should should benefit essentially that is is the idea so let me quickly navigate you to the workshop agenda as to what we will be covering in this six days workshop so this is the workshop agenda today is march 1 2024 friday yes so 6 to 7:45 it means 1 hour 45 minutes we are going to spoke uh, uh, discuss about structure equation modeling about cbcm pls scm and what are the considerations for using pls scm but before that i will also teach you what are the background for using any any kind of sem that that you are using either cbcm or pls scm what is the background then again session 2 so if you focus all sessions are divided into two parts 6 to 7:45 there will be a 15 minutes break and again and again from 8 to 9:30 so if you focus on the second part we are model building and how to build models models which are embedded in theory models which are testable when to use reflective constructs when to use formative constructs how to resolve the query whether the construct that you are using is reflective or formative in nature so all those things so in fact today session it will be it will be to take you into the insights of quantitative research and then we will try to connect with 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 sem again uh, it will be a very narrow perspective if i call that that this is the workshop for pls scm though we are going to learn pls scm but let's call simply a sem because sem has two approaches one is your partial least square and second is your covariance based scm so it it is advisable to just call it a sem and by the way both the methods of sem are complementary 
Yes. Okay. Can anybody respond? Am I audible? Hello. Can anybody respond? Am I audible? Hello. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Please talk yes, it sir, because audible. because uh, sometimes it so happens that electricity goes and such issues pops up. But even and and I promise you, if if required, I will extend this workshop for the seven day also. If if situation warrants and if if people demand that this workshop has to be extended by one more day, we will definitely extend it. And just a request: don't be in this workshop to gain certificates. Be in this workshop to gain knowledge. Whatever queries that you have, you ask, and I'll try to address those queries. If I if I can address your query now and uh, right now, it will be okay. If not, I will I will get back to you later on. So again, Saturday that is tomorrow. Here is here we are going to focus on R. So tomorrow is the day where we will master R. See, I'm not telling you that I will be teaching you R. Tomorrow we will master R. So if you have any fear related to R, tomorrow it will be issued. Somebody just pasted a, a posted in the group that that I think Dr. Gandhali posted. She said, "What knowledge of statistics one has to has to possess to attend this workshop? In fact, zero knowledge. Even if you have zero knowledge of statistics, uh, the workshop is designed in such a way that that we will cover right from the scratch. So whatever whatever queries and concerns that you have." Related to R, related to stats, or related to related to PLSSEM, everything would be would be addressed. Then March three again here from March three that is on Sunday. Sunday we will start performing PLSSEM in R. Okay, so if you if you focus on the flow of the workshop, it has been designed very intelligently to cover every aspects of PLSSEM. See, the purpose of this workshop is not to simply teach you PLSSEM. I would be very happy that by learning from this workshop, you can you can produce one paper. I think somebody's mic is on. I request all of you to mute yourself and unmute only when you have queries or or unmute only when you want to make certain point. Yes. So again, uh, then comes the second phase of the workshop, March eight to March ten. Here we are going to take mediation, moderation, moderation and multi group analysis, and then we will take advanced issues in PLS SEM. Now, again, let me tell you. PLS SEM is is still developing. It is still evolving. Now people are coming with new methodologies and uh, uh, new methods into it, and and that's why PLS SEM is very very emerging. If you talk about C, if you talk about CBSEM, uh, the theory is is concretized or the theory is concrete. Now not sure. many de developments are coming in CBSEM. I request all participants to mute yourself. Those who are joining late. For any reason, I request all of you to mute. Otherwise, there will be a chaos. There will be a chaos. Just a request: mute yourself. Okay. So this is the workshop agenda. Please go through it and ensure that I complete all the topics that has that has been promised in the in the agenda. Yes. Aparajita, Aparajita, I request you to mute yourself. Aparajita, please mute yourself. Okay. You can switch uh, switch off your video also when required. If you have any query, any doubt, please ask me. I will be happy to address all your queries and concerns. Okay, so uh, uh, Abhishek, can you tell me how many people are there in this workshop right now? Because once I share the screen, I'm not able to see anything. Okay, Abhishek, what's the number now? Nineteen. Saying total nineteen participants. Okay, okay, fair enough. So twenty-three are there. Total eighteen. Okay, 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 okay. So. Let me let me begin. Let me begin. Sir, uh, can I ask you something? Yeah, yeah. Parajita, go ahead. Yes. Sir, uh, one person want to join now, so can he register now? Uh, <laughs> so uh, may maybe uh, tell him to uh, uh, join later on. Yeah, you will share the link to him. Okay. Tell him to join later no. on. Yeah, because everything is settled. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. So. Now, friends, all of you pay attention. I'll address you in the name of friends. Yes, we all are friends and we are part of the research community. Now, when I talk about SEM, SEM is essentially a regression. Yes. Now, when I say regression, yes, regression has independent variables and dependent variables. So we make use of independent variables and try to predict about the dependent variable. As simple as that, yes. So you talk about either PLS SEM or or let's say CBSEM. This is nothing but a family of regressions. The beauty of of SEM is that you can have any number of dependent variable. 
if you focus on let's say simple linear regression or multiple re linear regression yes the dependent variable always used to be one construct or one variable yes and independent variable could be two three it could be it could be it could be many but when you talk about sem you can have multiple dependent variable you can you can have multiple independent variable and you can test the relationship between those variables so when i say sem sem is a regression technique sem is a regression technique so as simple as that and wherever possible i will try to uh, make my lecture very simple so that even a layman can understand and 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 you should not possess any doubt so by the way my name is uh, dr arun and uh, uh, I am into academics for past 15 years. In my past association, I, I was with Somaya Vidyar University. Then I moved to Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India. Then of late, I am more a freelancer. I run this firm called Datamatics Research Solutions. Yes. Now, my firm is, is, is into providing statistical consultancy and statistical solutions. In future, we intend to become a uh, uh, a market research company. So I'm basically the chief research analyst. As of now, there are 15 research scholars across India who are pursuing their PhD under me, though I'm not their official guide, though I'm not a guide uh, appointed by any university, but of late, there are 15 research scholars who are seeking guidance from me at, at various levels. So I'm happy to uh, assist and support the research community in every possible way. Yes. So just a small introduction about myself and I've been conducting workshop for, 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 for a good number of years. And I, I myself don't know that which is the number of workshop that I'm conducting right now. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So let me begin from basics. As I promised that I will start from scratch. Now, whenever you do research, the question comes measurements. Now, when I say measurement, it is central to quantitative research. As you all know that there are two branches of research. One is your qualitative research and the other one is your quantitative research. As far as qualitative research is concerned, though measurements are there in quanti qualitative research also, but it doesn't bother you or it doesn't trouble you that, that you need to have a perfect measurement in qualitative research. But when you talk about a quantitative research or a positivist research, let me use the term positivist research, measurements becomes very, very central. Let's say whatever constructs or whatever variables that you have, how are you going to measure that? That's why now whatever this writing that you see on the PPT, it's written by me. Most of the uh, are, are based on my experience. So when I say measurement, it is central to research, particularly in quantitative research. Now, please understand what is a quantitative research. Now, when I say quantitative research, it means the researcher believes that there is a reality and he is going to capture that reality through the survey. Yes. When I say quantitative research, it means there is a reality which is objective and a researcher is trying to capture the reality through his research predominantly by using a survey method. But when I say a qualitative research, there is no such thing called an objective reality because reality is different to different person. So quantitative research believes in objective reality and qualitative research believes in a subjective reality. Please note this, whenever do you, you conduct a survey or let's say whenever you design a survey, yes, your belief is that there is a reality and I'm going to capture that reality through, through survey and, and the method that you will use is your quantitative research. Yes. You see most of the journals, particularly Emerald journals, Emerald journals, by the way, Emerald journals are considered to be decent. Emerald, Francis and Taylor, Springer. These are considered to be good journals or, or for that matter, Sage. Now, if you read, uh, if you, let's say you're you are, you are reading any A category or a B category journal in Emerald, there people write, this is a quantitative study or the approach is quantitative in nature. So whenever a researcher says the approach is quantitative, he believes that there is one reality and it, he is trying to capture that reality through numbers. Second, now, 
as i said measurement is important in quantitative research now whenever you are measuring something you need to focus on two important things one is your validity and second is your reliability please note this whenever you are measuring something you need to focus on two things one is your validity and second is your reliability now when i say validity it means how accurately you are measuring a particular variable or constructs now when i say validity it means how accurately you are measuring a particular construct let's say if you want to measure intelligence now intelligence cannot be measured with the length of the hair yes if you want to measure how intelligent a person is it can't be measured with the length of a hair let's say you measure you measure somebody's length of the hair and you found that the person is intelligent now this is an erroneous measurement now in order to measure the iq level of a person you need to really ask the right set of questions to the person and then calculate what score is he is he getting yes so when i say validity it means how accurately you are measuring a particular phenomena which could be a variable or which could be a construct now when i say reliability reliability means when you are measuring a phenomena over over the period of time every time it should give you a similar results now to explain reliability i will give you i will give you an example of weighing machine let's say we all measure our weights so let's say if you stand on a weighing machine on first day the weighing machine shows 60 kg on second day it shows 70 kg on third day it shows 40 kg now you will say this weighing machine is not reliable reliability means every time the instrument should give you similar results so whenever you design a measurement in your research or whenever you design your survey you need to ensure that your measures are valid and your measures are reliable so these two things are very very important now whenever you perform sem in sem there is a technique to check the validity of the constructs and to check the reliability of your measures we'll discuss this when we are seeing pls sem or when we are running sem hope this much is clear any query you have we can we can definitely take it so whenever you are using measurements validity and reliability is of utmost important and validity and reliability is taken care by sem please bear this in mind yes next now when you talk about measurements in pure science particularly let's say physics or let's say mathematics their picture is pretty pretty sorted yes now let's say if you want to measure height you can measure somebody's height by 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 some measuring instrument let's say if you want to measure a person's weight it could be measured let's say you want to measure the speed and and we all know that the formula of speed is uh, distance covered divided by time and let's say if you want to measure the distance between two astronom astronomical bodies or let's say two celestial bodies the distance is measured in light year yes particularly astronomical distances so as far as mathematics is concerned or for that matter physics is concerned the picture is pretty sorted there are devices available there are instruments available there are techniques available there are formulas available which can calculate the measurement yes but when you talk about measurements in social sciences things are very very hazy see what what is going in a person's head there is no measuring device available yes there is no measuring device available which can which can be kept on your head and and exactly what you feel and exactly what you think can be captured that's why uh, measurements in social sciences let's say marketing or let's say finance or let's say hr ob psychology yes economics is something very very difficult to difficult to measure yes and that's why see initially i started the discussion saying cross sectional research when i say cross sectional research you try to collect data at one particular point in time see today you are satisfied with the job tomorrow it can so happen that you are not satisfied with the job so let's say uh, uh, i i took a cross sectional data and i, th I and i theorize something that job satisfaction is because of this this antecedents then that finding will not be valid for 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 future or or rather to put it in a very technical way that model will lack predictive power and that model is considered to be a decent model which has a predictive power so we'll discuss predictive power in detail 
later on even if you don't understand just relax today is the lecture is more theoretical and i want you to flow with the flow and i'll try every possible way to make my lectures very very interesting yes okay so when i when i talk about measurements in social sciences it's very difficult to measure a construct exactly as it is yeah okay again very important now whenever you talk about constructs or variables in social sciences they are always latent in nature when i say latent latent means it is hidden it cannot be measured directly okay let me give you one 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 construct impulsive buying behavior see we all go to malls we all go to demarts we all go to shopping complexes we plan something else and we end up buying something else it happens it happens whenever we step out from our house yes we plan something else and we end up behaving in a very different way so when there is an asymmetry between what you have planned and what you what you have done this behavior is termed as impulsive we we as humans are bound to behave in an impulsive way because there are a lot many theories or there are a lot many attractions that come or distractions come before us which which makes us behave in in, in a slightly irrational way yes now now if i give you a construct impulsive buying behavior how are you going to measure it see you simply can't observe a people and say that this person is behaving impulsively or or a particular person is not behaving an impulsively now to measure impulsive buying behavior you need to ask a series of questions to a person maybe a five items uh, uh, five item questionnaire or maybe a 10 item questionnaire or maybe a questionnaire which is having dimensions yes so if you take example of measurements in social sciences they are mostly latent please underscore this term let me highlight highlight this term latent when i say latent it means it is hidden it cannot be measured directly and the entire concept of sem is applicable as far as measurement of latent constructs is concerned i'll tell you one interesting example all of you pay attention long years back i was attending one workshop when i was a, a research scholar so i asked one question to the resource person he was from imt ghaziabad then i asked him one question see when a regression can take care of of finding the association between two variables why are you using sem when regression can take care of finding association between variables why should sem be applied honestly trust me i i i could not get a convincing answer now one of my friend is at iit bombay yes and uh, uh, he he told me an interesting when i was learning he told me he said arun whenever you are using a latent construct there the concept of structural equation modeling comes into picture when i say latent it means it is that variable or it is that construct which can't be measured directly so whenever you are having a latent construct let's say happiness organizational citizenship behavior impulsive buying behavior or goal orientation any construct which is measured using multiple items yes in that case sem is applicable so if somebody ask ask you a question why have you used a second generation statistics called sem why didn't you restrict your analysis to first generation statistics called regression then in that case you 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 should say sir or madam my my research has lot of constructs which are latent in nature and the best statistics that is available to to test latent constructs is structural equation as simple as this hope i'm making sense to all of you please feel free to ask as many questions as possible yes it's a very long session and it should not become a rhetoric it should not be not serve as boredom to you and everybody should should understand what i'm what i'm saying now i i have posed a question to all of you how would you measure the following social comparison tendency impulsive buying behavior by the way i come across all these constructs whenever i read a quantitative research paper social comparison tendency impulsive buying behavior goal orientation authentic leadership now how to measure authentic leadership do you feel that in today's time leaders are authentic see your guide or for that matter see your director or for that matter see your principal do you feel they are authentic now people who are in the good books of their boss they they might find that yes my leader is authentic but people who are in the bad books of boss they will find that my leader is not authentic authentic it's so see when you try to measure authentic leadership though there are standards case available i am not denying that 
things are very very hazy different people will have different opinion turnover intention yeah when people want to leave the organization they talk about leaving the organization they, they talk about crib, they start cribbing the organization your organization barabar nahi hai this organization has no crystal clear policies and all those things so turnover intention means before quitting a job you develop one intention and which is known as turnover intention again job satisfaction employee performance let me ask you one question and let me see who is the intelligent person who can answer me in a very perfect way by the way there is no wrong answer and everybody is intelligent out of all this uh, construct that you see in the last line which is the construct which is very easy to measure social comparison tendency impulsive buying behavior goal orientation authentic leadership turnover intention job satisfaction employee performance which construct do you find it's very easy to measure out of all the constructs is connection yes tushar yeah yes. let let let's let, yeah. felix has raised his hand felix go ahead sir yeah, employee felix. pardon employee performance very good felix bang on target employee performance you can simply measure by asking the persons uh, uh, what score did he get in the last performance appraisal maybe one or two item you can have one or two item and you can measure somebody's performance but authentic leadership goal orientation impulsive buying behavior you, you need to ask multiple questions to that person yes okay very good first question and a very perfect answer by felix thank you felix okay so these are some of the things which you need to be mindful when 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 we are discussing about sem okay so yeah let me yes now see there are two things in research please understand one is your defi one is defining your construct and second is operationalizing your construct now see now when people develop a scale or let's say when they are developing a measure in that case first people have to define the constructs that they have used in their study let's say you are working on goal uh, orientation let's say you yes, i request you to uh, sanjeev so. please mute, your, mute yourself sanjeev sorry ranjit ranjit mute yourself master rasul hello ranjit one so that's the difficulty in online that ranjit could you can you please mute yourself okay so now let's say uh, you are working on a research topic let's say goal orientation let's say the topic is the effect of goal orientation on life satisfaction so let's say if you if you if you are working on, the, on on this topic the effect of goal orientation on life satisfaction here there are two constructs one is your goal orientation and second is your life satisfaction now as a researcher you need to go ahead and define yeah. what is goal orientation and what is life satisfaction ranjit i request you to mute yourself ranjit are you there in the in, in the class hello ranjit just a request to you mute yourself okay let me try and mute him yeah just a second yeah. I am not able to mute him. Just a second. Just a second. Afrin requests you to mute yourself. Yes, please mute yourself. Yeah, you can ask me any questions and mute yourself and ask me any question. I'll be happy to address it. And sometimes by mistake, the mic is on and and it happens. But just a request to all of you, mute yourself. Yeah. Okay. See, whenever you do research, it is important that. first you need to define your construct and second you need to operationalize your constructs now see if if you are developing a new construct it is you who is going to provide the academic definition of that particular construct i'll give an example somewhere in 2003 and 4 uh, a new construct came in the field of organizational behavior and the name of the construct is psychological capital before 2003 there was no such construct called psychological capital it was luthans and and his associates they 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 coined a new construct and they named it as psychological capital 
so if you are if you are coming out with a new construct which rarely happens in most of the uh, universities or business schools most of us we take a construct which has been developed in the west it has been operationalized in the west and we use it in indian context and we write a very interesting research gap that not much is known in the indian context now this is a very stupid logic when you are writing a research paper stating that not much is known in the indian context this will not break ice yes so one is your let's say if you are if you have coined a construct you need to provide the definition of that construct yes and secondly you need to operationalize that particular construct when i say operationalization it means how is that construct how how that construct will be measured so when i say operationalization it means how will a particular construct be measured so when luthans came out with psychological capital construct he defined psychological capital and he gave a 24 item scale he gave a 24 item scale in order to measure psychological capital yes. now who is that person hello abhishek my friend just see who is there can you mute him he can't mute because i am the host sir it's a freen shah ah freen shah freen just a request lecture sir could you mute yourself yeah okay so please note there are two things which are very important in research it is defining the construct and operationalizing the construct now when i say operationalizing it means how are you going to measure that particular construct or variable now if you focus here now there are two ways by which you can operationalize a measure or a construct first is a long route either you develop your own measure or you develop your own scale now developing a scale is as good as writing a phd thesis please note this if you are doing a a research let's say in in iims or iits or let's say in any central university of india and if you tell your guide that i am going to develop a scale if your guide is knowledgeable enough yes he will say that developing a scale is as good as writing a phd thesis because it is very rigorous it is tedious not hard please and and and, and in this class there are around 17 to 18 research scholars my humble request to you that if your topic is not finalized you can think of developing a scale in indian context so that you can measure some of the phenomena yes so if you want to operationalize the measure you can develop your own scale or develop your own measure which in a sense is slightly rigorous and tedious but not hard there are books available there are techniques available there are youtube videos available there are courses available you can undergo the undergo it and you can develop your own measure by the way one of my professor i have learned a lot from him professor vishal gupta he is at iim ahmedabad his phd thesis is on developing a scale to measure leadership by the way professor vishal gupta has done an interesting job as far as leadership is concerned so he has developed a scale to measure leadership yes so you can develop a scale if you are now developing a scale you can use established measures now whatever construct that i showed you on on the previous slide impulsive buying tendency goal orientation authentic leadership there are standard scales available you can adapt those scales you can borrow those scales and you can measure your constructs and you can go ahead ahead with your research when you use established scales your work becomes easy yes you need not bother about uh following all the rigorous steps and coming out with a scale that is valid as well as reliable and and which is addressing your queries and concern it's it's easy to use an established scales in fact when i i, I did my phd i use all the established measures i didn't go for developing a skill but today let's say if i if, if i decide to do a post doc my either i will develop a scale or i will do a research which is based on experiments by the way just a food for thought to all the participants who are the, who are in this workshop if you ask my opinion which is the best research a research where you can carry out an experiments now experiment is is for a long time experiments used to take place in 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 pure sciences but of late people are doing experiments in social sciences marketing hr ob in finance also people are doing experiments 
whenever you do experiments please note this the variables are in your control and it is far more rigorous to to uh, to to design an experiment and come out with with your analysis and 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 report your finding so if today if i happen to do my postdoc either it will be a skill development or conducting an experiment in social sciences yes okay so i'm planning to conduct one research workshop in the month of may not with data matrix but with with, with some other forum i'll conduct one workshop on how to carry on or how to carry and conduct experiments particularly in social sciences so uh, yeah either you develop a skill or you use established measures which are there in the there in the literature yes okay let's go ahead okay now now whenever you are using measurements see this session is not about helping you understand how to develop a skill so i'm not covering the psychometrics and skill development part here we are focusing on using scales which are already there in the in the literature so let's say i want to measure job satisfaction so somebody has developed a scale for job satisfaction i'll be using that measure i'll give it to my sample and measure job satisfaction here in this session i'm not going to talk about scale development i i presume that we are going to use established scales and we are going to measure the uh, constructs of our interest now please note measurements are of two kinds one is your reflective measurement and second is your formative measurements reflective and formative these are two kinds of of measurements now please note when i say a reflective construct or a reflective measured construct uh, it is the construct which is causing the indicator okay so let me do one thing let me take you to a microsoft whiteboard all of you just pay attention and please let me know if things are not visible to you and please let me know if i slightly go fast because my brain is wired to speak very fast so if you feel that i am fast just tell me i will go slow see what i am telling that friends let me take a a black pen okay yes so i say uh when i say constructs see constructs is also known as variables huh? now particularly in psychology or in marketing the we 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 define a variable as constructs constructs and variables are one and the same thing but in scientific parlance variables are known as constructs variables are known as constructs so let us not be confused and let me erase this variable part because some of you might be new to research and you will be confused that constructs and variables are two different thing no constructs are variables when i say variables it means it will vary from person to person job satisfaction will vary from person to person leadership style will vary from person to person yes okay now when i say constructs please note constructs are of two kinds one is your reflective and second is your formative reflective construct and formative construct see what is the definition okay let me give one example let's say you are measuring psychap now when i say psychap psychap stands for social capital psychap stands for social capital now when i say psychap please note that that psychap is made of four dimensions one is your hope let me write ho for hope yes then it is composed of self efficacy yes thirdly re that is resilience and fourth uh, h e r o optimism optimism so all of you just pay attention what is psychological capital psychological capital is essentially a psychological resource that you have in yourself you see some people are very hopeful about life when i say self efficacy self efficacy is a belief that you can do it i remember i i i conducted my first workshop on r in february 2020 and uh, you you will not believe at that time i was not very well versed in statistics but i could handle a crowd and most of them were statistician for two days 
because I had a belief that yes, I can do it. So self-efficacy it is a belief that you can do it. Resilience. Resilience means your ability to bounce back from a catastrophe. To put it very simply, let's say somebody has left you or somebody some like uh, do you have the ability to bounce back or you become Kabir Singh? That should not have happened. Kabir Singh could not bounce back when the girl left him. Resilience means your ability to bounce back after a catastrophe. Some people have a tremendous uh, resilience within themselves. And some people are like what you call a scandal. They melt very quickly. And optimism. Optimist, uh, when I say optimism, how optimistic you are about your life. So let's say if you have psychap or if you have this psychological resource in you, this is going to impact your hopefulness. This is going to impact your self-efficacy. This is going to impact your resilience. And this is going to impact your optimism. So psychological capital is making you hopeful. It is, make, it is, making, you, uh, it is making you high on self-efficacy. It is making you resilient. And it is making you opt optimistic. To put it more simply, yes, in a reflective measured construct, the, the, the head of the arrow will be from the construct to the construct to the observed variable. It will be from the construct to the observed variable. Let's say hope can be measured. Self-efficacy can be measured by two, three questions. Resilience can be measured. Optimism could be measured. You see the position of arrow. The position of arrow is from construct to the dimension. Yes. So you see most of the measures, particularly in in, in psychology, in marketing, you see, they are reflectively measured. It means the assumption is the construct is causing the observed item. By the way, all of you just pay attention. Now, whenever you see SEM, whenever you run SEM, no, you'll, you'll come across these two kinds of diagram. One is your circular diagram and, and another is your box diagram. So whenever you, whenever you take any construct, the construct is always given in a in an oval shaped circle, this is an let's say circle or let's say oval shape. Construct will always be in oval shape, and the uh, observed variables will always be in box. So when construct is causing an indicator, let me put it this way: let's say this is the construct, any construct, any construct of your study, and let's say this is your indicator. Indicators are also known as manifest variables. So if a construct is causing indicator, yes, then such constructs are, are, are reflectively measured. Please note, if a construct is causing or if a construct is affecting the indicator or the manifest vari variables, such measures we term as reflective measures. Now, whenever you read literatures or standard research papers, there the authors provide whether their constructs are reflectively measured or formatively measured. They give. They, they write in detail whether the concept, construct is reflectively measured or formatively measured. Yes? Okay? Now let me take you to this particular discussion. So, we'll give demonstration also. Now, whenever you are running SEM, please note that in a reflective construct, the indicators of the construct it means the manifest variable are considered to be caused by that construct. In reflective measure construct, the construct is causing the indicator. Yes, it means the indicator is a birth child of the construct. Please remember this and I'll show you a couple of diagrams. It will give you a lot of clarity. In fact, when I was conducting this session in the month of Jan, there was almost 45 minutes discussion as to which construct is reflectively reflectively measured and which concept, construct is formatively measured. Again, this question is going to arise, but just hold for a second. If you have doubt, you can ask. Now, take example. Take example of an intelligence test. See, you see, there are certain students. They are very bright. And if you see their marks, they always come out in flying colors. Let's say above 90%. You see some people, 10 standard, 95%, 12 standard, 96%. In graduation also, about CGPA, about 9.7. Now people talk about CGPA and all those things. So see, intelligent, see, 
marks three. You are intelligent. That's why you are scoring more marks. The assumption is a person is scoring more marks because he is academically bright, or for that matter, he is intelligent. Unfortunately, uh, marks is considered as a sign of intelligence. But see, you measure intelligence by marks, but marks is decided by intelligence. Now, intelligence is a construct, and intelligence is causing somebody to score more marks. So, intelligence construct it is affecting the observed variable or the manifest variable marks. Yes. So, intelligence. Is an indication that it is a reflect reflectively measured constant. I'll show you a couple of measures in literature where you will be confused. Is it a reflectively measured or is it a formatively measured? By the way, the idea of SEM, please note this. The idea of SEM, it is applicable to reflectively measured construct. You calculate reliability, you calculate validity. The reliability and validity is always of reflectively measured construct. Please note this. Whenever you calculate validity and reliability, it is for reflectively measured construct. Yeah, in formative measured construct also, we check validity, but let me not go there. When I will take formative construct, I'll talk about validity in formative measured constructs. By the way, in this six days workshop, we are going to take a we are, we are going to take topics on both reflective as well as formative measures and we are going to see their reliability and validity. But see, reliability formative construct ka nahi hota hai. Please note this. Reliability is not applicable to formative constructs, but it is applicable to reflective constructs. Yes. Okay. Now, now please note this. In reflective constructs, the latent variable causes the Measured variables. Measured variables, either you call it a call it an observed variable or you call it call it a manifest variable or you call it an indicator variable. So when when latent variable causes the observed variable, that is an that is a case of reflective constant. Yes, okay. Now uh, in a reflective measure construct, covariances between indicators are expected to be zero when the latent variable is partial out. See. Take this, take this example. Let's say, let me use a different color. This mark is functioning. Okay. Let's say, if I remove psi cap, if I re remove psi cap, automatically hope will be removed, self efficacy will be removed, REOP will be removed. See what what this line says. Covariances between indicators, covariances between indicators are expected to be zero. When the latent variable is partial out, if you remove the latent variable psi cap, there will be no correlation or covariance between the between the manifest variables. Okay. Any doubt about reflectively measured construct? Yes, any doubt about reflectively measured construct? There is no wrong question, and there is no what you call as hesitation. If you ask any any doubt related to reflective measured construct. Please ask. Then we'll proceed to formatively measured construct. So, uh, could you please repeat the explanation for covariances? Okay. So, let's say Kiran, you let let me not able to see my marker here. Okay. Let me keep my hand here. Let's say okay. Let's say Kiran, you are measuring a constant. Let's say impulsive buying tendency. Let's say this is a construct and let's say you are measuring it with four items. Let's assume that this is a reflectively measured construct and this is your item one, item two, item three, and item four. I think my this my board, there is some problem. I'm not able to see the dot. So anywhere I'm writing now. Actually, there used to be a dot. Let me check what has happened suddenly. Okay. This dot should figure out. Okay. Now, now, Kiran, if I remove this construct, see, please remember in reflective measured construct, it is the construct which is causing the manifest variable. It is the construct which is causing the indicator. So, let's say if you partial out, partial out means if you remove the construct, the covariances between the indicator will be zero. 
Yes. See, please note this. I said the 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 concept of reliability is applicable to reflective measured construct and not to formative. See, in a reflective measured construct, you can expect a very high correlation between the indicator items. Yes, right. indicator item has very high correlations. Hota hai. Now, why there is a very high correlation? Because the underlying construct is same. Now, take right. example. Take example of parents. See, now people say, see, there is a there is a saying that 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 parents deserve their kids. Now, when you are raising a child, the child is a reflection of parent. So, let's say mm -hmm. if there are four members in the family. Their attributes are going to be similar. So yes. when a construct is causing the indicator, the indicators will have very high correlation or covariance between them. Now, if you remove the construct, it means the correlation will be zero. Okay. The, the correlation will be zero. zero. It is that idea. Oh, thank and you. Whenever you are using the reflective construct, you see if your loadings are low. Let's say sometimes when you when you run a, pre a preliminary analysis and you find that the loadings are lesser, then you go and delete that particular item and you rerun the uh, rerun the operations or you rerun the sem. Now it is fine, it is okay to drop an item in a reflective construct because in reflective construct you ask a person. Similar questions in four or five different ways. So it is it is natural to expect a very high correlation between the manifest variables, and it is also okay to drop one or two item from a construct which is reflectively measured. Because anyway, you are asking a same question in 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 five different ways. So ultimately, you are measuring the same thing, and definitely the correlation is going to be high. Please note. Covariance, correlation, and regression. Actually, it is same. The first test of association between a variable is covariance. Slightly better is correlation. Even better is regression. In fact, regression, correlation, and covariance they are measuring the association between the variables. Okay. So if you remove the parent construct or the latent construct, the covariance will become zero. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now let me proceed with formative measured construct. This is a continuation. Uh, now formative constructs are slightly trickier. Now there might be people in this class who will be from economics, who will be from finance. Yes. Now these people they use formative construct. Uh, in in uh, they, they 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 commonly use formative measured constructs. So now here yeah, the picture is opposite. So in a formative construct, the measured variables are considered to be the cause of the latent variable. Earlier, in reflective, latent was causing the manifest variable. In formative, it's vice versa. The manifest variables are causing the latent construct. Now, how do you calculate human development index? Let me give an example. Again, I, I'm... I have left economics long back. I used to teach economics, but I'm not in sync with economics as of now. So let's say you take example of human development index. Or let's say multidimensional poverty index. Now HDI, MDI, MPI, they are used in economics. Let me focus on HDI first. See, HDI kaise banta hai? Per capita income, please correct me if anybody buddy from economics or maybe from finance, please correct me. People see per capita income, people see education. Yes. People see what? Let's say uh, access to health. Life expectancy. So life ah. expectancy. Life expectancy. Very good, uh, Afrin. Yes. So we have we have life expectancy. And let's say, let us take one more measure. Uh, access to healthcare facility. Now focus, the arrow is from observed variable or manifest variable to the latent construct. It means the manifest variable are causing the latent construct HDI. 
और लेट मी टॉक अबाउट जी डी पी जी डी पी पता है जी डी पी जी डी पी में आई कैन टेल यू जी डी पी इट इट इज कंजम्पन एक्सपेंडिचर इट इज इन्वेस्टमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर इट इज गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर एंड इट इज नेट एक्सपोर्ट दैट इज एक्स माइनस एम सो वेन सी वेन योर मैनिफेस्ट वेरिएबल्स दे कॉज योर लेटेंट कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट then such constructs are considered to be formative constructs just opposite of what is reflective construct the position of arrow in formative construct is from manifest variables to the latent construct again concepts in economics or econometrics or for that matter in finance even in marketing even if you see that circle model of parasuraman some of the constructs are 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 formative in nature even in marketing also now the now the question is should we use a reflective measured construct or a formative construct now see it is up to you who will decide whether i should operationalize a construct as a reflective or formative but let's say if you are uh using a measure which has been developed by some other author then you need to see how has the author operationalized that particular construct if you are borrowing a scale and if the author has operationalized it as a reflective construct then you are left with no choice you have to use it as a reflective construct but let's say if the author has developed that particular construct as a reflective construct then again you are left with no choice you have to use that construct as a formative construct so when manifest variable causes the construct it is a formative construct and please note this formative construct is nothing but regression formative construct is nothing but regression now let's say if you want to write an equation for gdp a regression equation how are you going to write an equation for gdp okay let me pen let let's say uh gdp uh, is your sir, dependent variable a... yes go ahead abhishek yes uh, sir i just want to ask uh, if we are following any theory for an example if we are following a theory of planned behavior okay and uh, uh, and the planned behavior can be uh, change the construct uh, can be used of uh, can be choose any of these to uh, reflective or formative okay 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 abhishek i got it let's say you are using ajens i think if i'm not mistaken it is ajens theory of plant behavior yes okay yeah. see first of all as a researcher our objective is not to uh identify whether a construct is reflective or formative let's say if you are using theory of plant behavior in your model in your model your your objective is to test the relationship between two constructs or you want to uh, have a causal productive uh, uh, or or you want to understand the cause and effect uh, relationship between two variables now if the author who has given this theory of plant behavior if he has given the construct and he has operationalized the construct as a reflective then you can't go ahead and change it and say i will measure it using a formative construct no no that's why i'm saying whenever you are in doubt let's say you are in doubt whether a construct is reflective or formative you should read the paper where where those measures are there there in that paper the authors are going to give you explanation as to how they have operationalized that particular measure abhishek to answer you you cannot uh, exercise your choice in deciding whether i will measure a formative construct as reflective and vice versa you have to take it as it is given by the developer of that particular scale hope abhishek your query is answered but uh, but sir the we just i am just we just using the theory but all the all the items for the measuring is developed by the researcher then also the researcher cannot change the uh, towards the formative or reflective see okay okay see again i said okay see first of all no 
if you are using a reflective construct, as I said that it is fine to drop some items in a reflective measured construct. Yes, because correlation between them is very high. But in formative measured construct, it is not that easy to drop an item because the latent constructs will be decisively affected. Now, if you remember, Central Statistics Office, it calculates GDP for India on an annual basis, CSO. Now, let's say if you are computing GDP, you can't drop any item, neither C, neither I, neither G, nor X minus M. So when I say formative constructs, they are very rigidly defined. The researcher can't exercise liberty. That, again, there is certain liberty is there, but you can't exercise much liberty in dropping an item. But again, Abhishek, uh, let's say, uh, okay, let's focus on this slide. Hope it will answer your query. Then I will come to it. Now, Abhishek, pay attention. Focus on this. Abhishek, this is for you and for others also. Let's say if you are measuring customer satisfaction on an online shopping platform. Yes. Now, if you want to measure satisfactions, you will not ask one question. Okay, I'll give an example. Let's say when you when you use Zomato services or when you use Ola, Uber, when you have used the services, they ask you one item question. How likely are you to recommend our services to your friends and relatives? So if a person gives eight, nine or 10, it means the person is satisfied. So there are proxy ways of measuring a particular variable. But when you talk about publishing a paper, you can't use one item in most of the cases. Now, let's say you want to measure customer satisfaction, but customer satisfaction again is multidimensional. Now you go and theorize Abhishek. Abhishek, you are going ahead and theorizing that I will measure customer satisfaction using delivery time. In how much time the product was delivered at your doorstep. How was the product quality? How was the customer service? And how was the website usability? Whether the website was usable or not. So Abhishek, you can go ahead and you can you can you can take all these four items and you can say, okay, now these four items, delivery time, product quality, customer service, and website usability. Website usability. Just a second, just a second, guys. Just a second. Huh? If there is one. Uh, uh, ha, ha, Shiva, hello, tell me. Shiva, bolo na, hello. Uh, may I, a second. Na? Guys, just give me a second. Some physiotherapist is going to come to treat my family members. Just a second. Just Abhishek. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Please excuse me. Now, now please pay attention. As a researcher, definitely we have a liberty to a certain extent that how are we going to measure a particular construct. Now, let's say if, if Abhishek wants to measure customer satisfaction on an online shopping platform and he identifies this four, four, four dimension and he says that these four dimensions will cause a customer to be satisfied. If a person rates high on all the four dimensions, then the customer is going to be satisfied. Now, again, take example of this workshop. Now I'm conducting this workshop at the end. I will be circulating a feedback form. Now feedback form always has to be multidimensional. Let's say you might be happy with the resource person, but you might not be happy with the, let's say reading material, or let's say you will be happy with the timing, but let's say you will be unhappiness. You will be unhappy with some other dimensions. So sometimes the researcher is intending to understand the uh, multi-dimensionality of a particular construct fine enough, then in that case, he can go ahead and he can operationalize the measure as a formatively measured construct. But let's say if a construct is already defined as a reflective measure, you can't go ahead and make it a formative. There actually reservation exists, Abhishek. Abhishek, hope I have addressed your query. The floor is open. You can ask as many doubts as possible. Okay. Hope your query is resolved. Yeah, somewhat. Hope your query is addressed. I was able to address your query. Now, Abhishek. Yeah, uh, it, ha, ha, go ahead. It, go ahead. it is all, but uh, my still thing is that, uh, like, I am 
I am taking that uh, theory and I am extending that theory with my research. Okay. So I'm just confused that whether I will go with the reflect or I go with the okay. formulate. Okay. Okay. Let me answer it. Let's say uh, Abhishek is extending theory of plant behavior. He is bringing one new variable. Now, Abhishek, you need to ask that question. Just focus on the items of those variables. Do you think the items of those, let's say, again, again, I, I think Abhishek is still conceptualizing his theory. Now, let's say if you bring a new variable into your model, yes, just see the items. Are the items unique in themselves? Are the items unique? If the items are unique, it's fine. Then it is a formative constant. But if items are repetitive in nature, one question you are asking in five different ways, then it's better to operationalize it as a reflective measure. In formative measure, please note, every item is unique. Now focus on customer satisfaction, customer satisfaction, delivery time, product quality, customer service, website usability. These are all dimensions. They will have observed variables in them. And I am presuming that customers now, now please pay attention. When the items are unique, it is better to operationalize as a formative construct. When items are repetitive, it is better to operationalize as a reflective construct. But if you operationalize a construct as a formative, then you need to come out with a strong logic and there you will have very less liberty to drop a particular item. In reflective measure construct, it is easy to drop one or two items if the loadings are less. But in formative, you have less liberty of dropping the item. But Abhishek, no harm. See the items. See the manifest variables. If you find the manifest variables are unique, they are different. Nothing wrong in operationalizing that particular construct as a formative construct. Abhishek, over to you. Okay, sir. Noted. Uniqueness. Uniqueness will decide whether a construct is... Again, this is not written somewhere. This is as per my understanding. If you find that the items are unique or dimensions are unique. Go ahead and operationalize it as, as a as a formative function. Yes. Okay. Okay. So my, my my question is that when we say about the uniqueness, uh, the keywords which we take generally on the larger scale on the international scale, most of the keywords are unique. Most of the keywords are repetitive. Ah, okay. So but again, uh, see. Uh, when. Uh, when we come towards a particular area, like I am taking, I am doing my research in uh, India. And hmm. the keywords which I'm taking, they are the unique in terms of the India. Okay, okay. So, uh, huh, okay, okay, I, I, okay, I got it, I got it. See, uh, irrespective of whether you do research in India or abroad, again, I'm saying, see the items. See the items which are used to measure that particular constructs. See, again, uh, I'll tell you, Abhishek, uh, Uniqueness, according to me, is the best test to decide whether a construct yeah. is reflective or formative. But again, Abhishek, I'll take you to one, one this to address you in a very foolproof manner. Let me take you to this particular book, and uh, here you will get 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 some idea, get some idea, and I will give you a final word also how to take the construct whether reflective or formative. Here you can see. Evaluation of formatively measured construct. Now, Abhishek and others, Abhishek has asked a very pertinent question and it's a very burning question. Abhishek, focus on these questions. How is quality measured? See, quality. The product services offered by the company are of high quality. And you are asking it on a like a response. Just a second. Just a Some doctor is going to come in my house some for physiotherapy, that's why. Now, all of you just pay attention. Let me not distract. Sir, can uh, I interrupt in between? I just uh, have uh, a uh, go yes. yes, sir. So, as you said, the construct, as you said, the formative and reflective, I got everything as clear as, as a crystal clear point. But the thing is that my question is that I am working on UTA UT model. Like my uh, PhD depend upon the AI adoption by academic researchers. Okay. So in that, I will be extending this particular theory, wherein I will be integrating some different technological adoption model. So okay. is it compulsory that I use all the items that were previously used in different 
different different construct let's say i'm taking uh, 11 constructs in my phd thesis and okay. three items under each construct, each construct. so okay. yes so so that is it compulsory that i must take all the items that i can see in research gate or on science direct or lc and so on or i can make my own items see uh, again afrin if you take all the let's say you have 11 constructs yes and 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 you have you have done the literature review and you have included your own items in all the constructs so if you are using uh, your own items in the construct again you have to run an efa and check whether the loadings are actually loading to that particular construct or not but taking 11 construct and uh, again i'm not sure because when you take when you when you work with multiple constructs there are always uh, there, there is always a problem of multicollinearity, and because of which to avoid this, so to avoid this, as per you, what should be the ideal number of the constructs as see, well as the items? See again, uh, there is there is no number as such. Again, uh, but Afrin, I would strongly recommend you to read uh, literatures where scale developments have taken place. It's a very uh, uh, what you call as a vague or rather not a perfect idea to work with 11 constructs and then extend a theory. Yeah, it's like uh, claiming for something which you can't achieve. If you really want to extend a theory, uh, take few constructs, maybe two or three. I would not suggest take 11, 12, 13 and then propose an extension to the existing theory. That will not be... Uh, 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 appropriate and secondly uh, 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 how many items to include that is of course your choice but again you should have minimum uh, four to five items in every construct because let's say if loadings let's say if you run the preliminary analysis and you find loadings to be lower you need to drop it so experts say that minimum three items but i would say try to have five items uh, for every dimension, but okay. what yes. even if you are in, uh, 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 yes, I had written one paper also that is adoption of Chat GPT by postgraduate learners. Yeah, so yeah. in that, I have taken four constructs of UTA UT model, and I okay. have added two more constructs from my side. Okay. That means I have work only on six constructs and my okay. hypothesis only for only two hypotheses were supporting and four hypotheses were not supporting in that i haven't done any efa and or cfa i have simply made a mosm structure with it okay i got it i got it i got it so, i got it so, so can a particular person prove a hypothesis in research paper and same hypothesis can get incorporated in phd part see you can incorporate as many hypotheses as you want but the question is when you have multiple constructs and you run a regression or for that matter sem your most of the hypotheses are going to fall apart. Your alternative hypothesis will not be supported. So that's the problem. So it is fair enough when you take four or five constructs and you try to understand the relationship between them, it is fair enough. But having many constructs, ultimately, you, you don't come out with something meaningful. I'll tell you one interesting example, Afrin. Just to answer you, then I'll, I'll answer Abhishek, Abhishek's question. Yes, sir. Uh, my professor, Professor Vishal Gupta, he was developing a skill on leadership. Yes. And this will address your question also, others' question also. Now, see, there are two dimensions of leadership. Either a leader is task-oriented or is people-oriented. Yes, some leaders are too task-oriented and some leaders are, are people-oriented. So what Professor Vishal Gupta did, he added three more dimensions. He added three more dimensions and then he tried to understand how, how leadership takes place. So already two dimensions were there. Two task orientation and, 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 and people orientation was there. Out of his literature review, he went ahead and added three and four more dimensions to it. So if you see his paper, uh, Creativity in R&D Laboratories, to my understanding, he has taken five or six uh, constructs out of which two, three were already there. So Afrin, 10, 11 would not, would not make sense to me. And uh, I, I, I would not uh, suggest you to take as many constructs according to you. Somewhere you should slice. 
as a researcher we should always have the habit of slicing slicing so that's what uh, that's what uh, i was doing i was writing multiples of paper on adoption of ai and whatever yeah. the hypothesis are like you know proving on so what i was thinking to take only that construct in my phd proposals and add on with my unique yeah. construct do a strong literature review and try to identify those antecedents which 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 have a very high relationship yes sir yes sir yeah or uh, that's why you in, in research there is something known as nomological validity sorry this is a very broad question others might not be interested but i'll try to make it as interesting as possible uh, uh, before deciding the constructs you should do a thorough literature review and take those constructs which are very very important yes that's why i i i, I strongly recommend uh, research scholars to read meta analytic paper or review paper whenever you read meta analytic paper or review paper you always come across those constructs which are very very important and if you don't include those constructs your model will not be up to the mark it means you are not explaining something which is very very important okay and coming to abhishek abhishek ka question ye hai abhishek has asked this question that that let's say if i am including uh, one or two new uh, uh, constructs in my model to the existing model so how should i uh decide whether it should be reflective or formative so first test is uh if the items are unique if the items are different then you can go ahead and model it as model it as formative and if the items are repetitive you can go ahead and model it as 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 reflective now uh, abhishek i want you to pay attention to all these constructs now quality now how is quality measured see the product services offered by the company are of high quality second the company is an innovator rather than an initiator with respect to industry c here they are talking about product and services here they are calling company an innovator third they are talking about value of money abhishek please pay attention fourth uh, again the product service offered by the company are good and this is similar to this item so item number 1 and item number 4 are similar but again good and high quality same here customer concerns are held in high regard at the company different item the company is a reliable partner of customers again different item again it's talking about customer only but different the company is a trustworthy company abhishek and i have lot of respect for the company if you see bearing bearing two or three items all the items are unique so when all the items are unique this is a classic case of formative measured formatively measured constructs abhishek abhishek got it yes sir way, got it ha so here is a chapter of this book evaluation of reflective measured models and evaluation of formatively measured models so go and read the items of the construct it will make sense to you yes thank you ha okay 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 any any other query from any other participants hello hello okay let us let us proceed i am not able to see hands and all those things because uh, just a second just a second okay now all of you just pay attention no? uh please let me know when to stop huh? because 7:45 will take a break huh? so if you are measuring customer satisfaction it could be measured in reflective way also in formatively formative way also but let let's say if you understand the dimensionality of the customer satisfaction then you can model it as a formative measure also again we we also have certain discretion at our hand certain discretion but let's uh, see we have certain discretion at our at our hand but but if the authors or the developers have measured it as a reflective then if you are using that scale you can't go ahead and make a reflective formative or formative or reflective so there you don't have liberty but you can come out with your own explanation or you can come out with your own constructs and saying that i am going to measure it in a formative way and then you need to provide a rational or a logic that why formative is more important than reflective yes okay hope this answer is okay by the way go and read that book and see the items and it will make sense sir yes kartik yes sir uh, can you please repeat the last sentence i missed out <laughs> okay see uh if a scale developer has developed a, a a measure for a construct as reflective then you should use it as a reflective measure only you can't go ahead and make a reflective measure as formative or a formative measure as reflective 
if a scale already exists. Now, let's say if I'm using this quality scale, if I'm using this quality uh, formative, and let's say if, I, if I'm using this formative quality scale, I should use it as formative itself. Let's say I'm using this quality uh, construct. I'm using these items. Now here, I should take it as formative only. I can't go ahead and make it and measure it as reflective. By the way, again, as far as, see, by the way, in, in, in Smart PLS 4, there is one application which is known as confirmatory tetrad analysis. So it's a, it's a, it's a test available where you can check whether a, whether a construct is reflective or formative. But again, I don't recommend any test or stats. Even for that matter, I disagree with confirmatory tetrad analysis as far as taking a construct as reflective or formative. It is a researcher who has to take a call whether the construct will be reflective or formative. But if measure exists and it says it is reflective, in my understanding, you can't make a reflective measure as formative and formative as reflective. This quality, if somebody is using this eight item of quality, here it is defined as formative. You should go and define it as formative construct, not as reflective. As simple as this, sir. Kartike, hope your query is addressed. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. Okay. If you are using quality, here it is given as formative, use it as formative. Don't make it reflective. Okay. So, sir, that means uh, whatever the construct has been uh, discovered in the past literature, it has to be used in the same uh, I try, I try to use Try to use in that way, in that way itself. Yes. Okay. But let's okay. say customer satisfaction here, you are bringing some new dimension. Let's say, I think uh, Afrin was talking about, now somebody has seen customer, customer satisfaction in a formative way by seeing five items. Now, Afrin can go ahead and bring two more items or two more dimensions to measuring customer satisfaction. And there she can take liberty, whether it is reflective or formative. But there again, she, she, she needs to be very innovative in deciding the items of that particular construct. Yes? Okay. Yes, sir. Huh. Now, by the way, Afrin had, uh, she, she, she was declared as uh, uh, best paper in the, she presented a paper and she posted in the LinkedIn. I, uh, she, she has got yes, some sir. award for award for that paper. So hats off to Afrin and young researchers Thank like you, her. Sir. Yeah, yeah, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. She got some award also for presenting that paper. Okay. Uh, yes, now, all of you just pay attention. In summary, the measured variables indicators cause the latent variable. Now, in formative, indicators are causing the latent variable. Second, covariances between the items, they could be zero, positive, or negative. See, technically, when you are using a formative construct, there should not be correlation between the independent variable. See, there should not be multicollinearity, but uh, the covariances between the item, let's say C plus I plus G plus X minus M, the dimensions of, or, or let's say the indicators of GDP, actually, unke beech mein correlation hona nahi chahiye, but technically, aisa hota nahi hai. whatever independent variables that we use in our formative construct unke beech mein kuch na kuch to r hota hai they have some correlation between them and when you take formative construct formative construct is nothing but a regression formative construct ka jo equation hoga it is as good as regression yahan pe main regression ka equation likh raha tha let's say uh, let me erase this part so that things are very very clear okay just bear with me we'll take a we'll take 10 more minutes and we'll we'll, we'll give you a break yes Okay, all of you just pay attention. Now, now focus on, 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 on this. Now, friends, now just pay attention. Let's say if you want to write an equation for GDP, how will you write? You will say GDP is nothing but some constant term that is beta naught. Yes, then, then we have X1 uh, or let, let's say just a second. It will be, it will be, let's say, uh, beta 1 C plus beta 2 I plus beta 3 C plus beta 4 X minus M plus the error of regression. So whenever you use formative construct, please note that 
actually you have to run a regression. In, whenever you're using a formative construct there, you only have to use regression. It takes a regression perspective. In regression mein kya hota hai? There is one dependent variable and there are more than one independent variable. And there is one assumption of regression that there should not be multicollinearity between the independent variable. So again, when you are operationalizing a measure as a formative construct, you have to ensure that, that there should not be a very high correlation between the indicators. Because if there is a high correlation between the indicators, then it suggests that the items are reflective and not formative. Yes, as simple as this. So when we read the qual when we read the items of quality, bearing two or three, most of the items were unique. And that suggested that the construct is formative in nature. Okay, as, as simple as that. This. Okay, now how many will we'll take five minutes? Then, then we'll take a break. Normally in online mode, taking a lecture for let's say 90 minutes is it's it's very taxing for, for the for the participants, not for the resource person. Okay. Now see see diagrammatic visualization. This will make picture very, very clear to all of you. Now see a reflective construct. The, the arrow is from the construct to the measure. So x1, x2, x3, x4. These are your manifest variable. These are your indicators. And these are caused by the parent construct, which is your reflective construct. And this E1, E2, E3, E4, these are the errors associated with the manifest variable or as errors associated with the indicators. And this is lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4. These are your loadings. These are your loadings. Now, when you take formative construct, you see x1, x2, x3, x4. So all these indicators, they are causing the construct. So in a formative construct, the indicators are causing the construct. So definitely the, the, uh, the error will be associated with the with the latent construct. Yes. And here it is assumed, it, it, it is advisable that the correlation or the covariances between the construct should be, should be, should be less. Should be, should be less. Hope everyone's question related to reflective and formative is addressed. Whenever in doubt, read the literature and see how the authors have operationalized the construct. Hope this much is okay. Shall we proceed next? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Don't keep any doubt. Let me see if any any chat is there. Uh okay, okay, okay. Uh sir, is the lecture will be recorded for future reference. By the way, Karthik, if I forget to record, you should be able to write uh, write something on your own, or maybe you should type on your laptop. But by the way, you'll get a recording. <laughs> get a recording. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's do one thing. We'll take a, a 15, 20 minutes break. Eight o'clock, we will be back on time. Yes, okay. Will that be okay with all of you? Yes, sir. Okay? yes, sir. Let's take a 20 minutes break so that have some water, have some tea so that you don't experience too much of boredom and you don't fatigue. You don't get fatigued. Okay, Chalo. let's meet at eight o'clock.
So you are on mute. Uh, I was saying that, uh, thank you, Kiran, for reminding me. Uh, if you have any query, you can ask me related to what has been discussed. I'll be happy to address your concerns. So any query from the previous session, you can ask me. See, researchers have to be very, very innovative when they write their research papers. And uh, I was just uh, uh, reading the discussion whether AI is going to replace humans. Of course, never and not. Because one thing that really sets us apart from AI is that humans can imagine it. Our capability to imagine makes us very unique and very different. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just forgetting the name of that book, but uh, just few months back, I was at uh, EDI. I, I joined there as a faculty there. So I was reading one book in the library and that book was how researchers select a research topic for themselves. By the way, if you enroll yourself in some of the prestigious uh, institutes in India to do your PhD, people take at least a year or more than a year to select a, a research topic for themselves. Unfortunately, in many colleges and universities, the guides give us a topic and we try to solve their problem rather than solving our problem. So it is always advisable to take a topic which is very dear to your heart rather than solving a, a, a problem or taking a topic which is dear to someone else's heart. And when I was reading that book, I, 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 I tried a lot, a lot to somehow trace that book, but I didn't record the name and the author of the book. But that book was so awesome, it had chartered the journey of, of, of research scholars as to how they selected a topic for themselves. Yes, okay. So uh, it's very interesting. And there, when, when I read those topics and, and how, how researchers decided a research topic for themselves, they were so innovative. And most of the researchers, they had taken a research topic which was based on their experiences. If you see... Uh, PhD topics or for that matter, any research topic which researchers do, most of the topics will be related to their research interest. If you are really a, a, a researcher who wants to make a mark on society or make a mark on publication, take a topic which is very dear to you. Yeah, okay. Just a request to all of you, please mute yourself and, and ask query and, and unmute when, when you have a query to ask. Uh, uh, Srivastavji, please mute yourself, okay? So let me share the screen and, and begin the discussion. By the way, today is a discussion where we are going to understand all the nuances. Let us be theoretically sound and fair enough or, or be on a, on a that footing where, where we never have a, a problem related to uh, understanding all the basics that when to use SEM. Again, use SEM when you are working with latent constructs. When constructs are latent, it means they can't be measured directly. It is always advisable to go for SEM and SEM will do the reliability testing and the validity testing. Okay. Yes. I think uh, I love Srivastavji. He is from uh, Lucknow and uh, uh, he raised a query as to whether I'm going to use Smart PLS 4. No, Smart PLS 4 I'm not going to use. I'm going to use open source software and we are going to produce results as good as what Smart PLS 4 does. Okay. So uh, let, let us proceed. Let us proceed. So, yeah. Now, let us focus on the reliability of measures. Again, reliability is something that SEM helps you to calculate. See, you can calculate reliability even without using SEM. If you use SPSS or for that matter R, you can calculate reliability even without using SEM. Now, I come across many papers in, in C category journals where people don't use SEM. Yes, people use process macro or for that matter IBM uh, SPSS. And people wrote re, re, people report reliability of the measures and they run a stepwise regression or hierarchical regression. In fact, if you see uh, uh, papers, let's say uh, before 2010 or for that matter in 90s and 80s, most of the seminal papers were written using uh, simple regression like stepwise and multiple regression or logic, logic regression. And there also people reported reliability even without using IBM Amos and all of, for that matter, running SEM also. So now what is reliability? Now, see, when we collect data, let's say we have collected data from 
500 respondents. Now we calculate a Cronbach alpha and uh, the threshold is that your reliability should be greater than or equal to 0 0.70. It should be greater than or equal to 0 0.70. If it is greater than 0 0.70, yes, we say that uh, that reliability uh, measure is, is, is achieved. But what is reliability? See, anyway, when, when we are taking a 500 sample and putting it into the software, the software is computing the reliability for all the respondents. For all the respondents. Yes. Now, please note, reliability, uh, we also call it inter-item consistency. Uh, it's an indication that that majority of the people are reliable in answering the the, the, the survey. See, when people read your questions and record their responses, reliability will not be a problem. Or let's say when people uh, are not emotional in answering the survey, reliability will not be an issue. Let's say, okay, I'll give an example. Let's say there is a teacher and he, he scolded a student. And uh, on the very same day, the student was supposed to fill the feedback form for the teacher. Now, since a student has been scolded, so he is going, he is bound to rate unfavorably. He is bound to rate unfavorably to the teacher because teacher has scolded him. Though the teacher might have taught very nicely, but since the teacher has scolded him, he is going to rate low to the teacher. So here in this case, the respondent or the participant is emotional. So when people become emotional in recording their responses or when people don't read the items of the survey and they just fill it indiscriminately, in that case, reliability will be a concern. So that's why whenever you design your survey, you have to be genius. You have to introduce some marker variable or some filler questions here and there, or a negative worded item uh, into your survey in order to check that people are actually reading and recording their responses. The reliability will be violated when people become emotional or when people don't read the survey and then they answer. So reliability is of course very, very, very important in, in, in research. Now, now here we are talking about the reliability of our scale. Now, when I say reliability, it is irrespective of whether you develop your own measure or you use established scales. Now, for the first time, I'm using the term scales. Scales means I'm using somebody else's measurement. In social science, we use the term scales. Scales are nothing but, it is, uh, scales are nothing but how constructs are operationalized. It means how constructs are measured. So whether you develop your own scale or you use somebody else's scale, the test of reliability and validity is important and you cannot ignore it. So either you develop your scale or you, you use somebody else's scale, you have to check two things. That is reliability and validity. Now, reliability and validity testing is basically taken care of by CFA. Now, why people do CFA? Now, in SEM, there is something known as Confirmatory factor analysis. Now, whenever you run a CFA, now CFA is a term which is very popular in, in CBSM. In, in PLS SEM, instead of CFA, we call the inner model, uh, outer model testing. So in uh, IBM AMOS, or, or let's say in, 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 in CBSM, we have um, uh, what you call as uh, CFA. In PLS SEM, we have called outer model. It's one and the same. Let me use interchangeably. So whenever you run a CFA, actually you are testing the reliability and validity of the measures. Yes, reliability means every time if you are uh, uh, taking that survey, it should produce similar results. Compare it with a weighing machine. A weighing machine, every time you stand, should give you a, a, a reliable measure. If every time the weighing machine gives you a different number, you will say this machine is problematic. It is not reliable. Yes. Okay. And 
and validity. So reliability and validity cannot be ignored whenever you use scales. Now, what is reliability? So reliability refers to the consistency or dependability of a measurement. Yes. Now, is my scale consistent or is my measure consistent? Can I depend on it? So all these questions are answered by reliability. It indicates how well a measurement instrument such as test, survey or scale produces consistent results when administered repeatedly under similar conditions. Means every time it should give you similar results. Okay, I'll give an example. Let's say you are standing on a weighing machine and the weighing machine is slightly faulty and every time it is giving you 10 kg extra. So let's say today morning you stood on that weighing machine your weight was 60. Evening you, let's say after having your food, again you stood on that weighing machine. Now your, let's say the food is of 2 kg or let's say 1 kg. Let me put it lesser. So now the weight is, let's say again, 61. See, uh, if, your, if your weighing machine is giving you 10 kg extra every time that you stand, still it is reliable, but it is not valid. Still it is reliable, but it is not valid. See, again, for a scale to be accurate, it should be both reliable as well as valid. A scale can be reliable, but it is not valid. Let's say you stand on a weighing machine. Let's say every person who stands on the weighing machine is getting 10 kg extra. That means the weighing machine is reliable, but it is not valid. It is not accurate. It is giving you a distorted figure. It is giving you 10 kg extra. So a scale has to be reliable and also it has to be valid. But when I say reliability, it means consistency. It should give you similar results every time whenever you use it. Either it could be a test, it could be a survey or it could be a sale. So reliability is a very important consideration in a quantitative research. Now, some of the commonly reliability tests that we report when we use SEM, it is Cronbax Alpha. Composite Reliability, then Dijkstra, Hensler's Row, Cutman's Lambda. There are many, many, many. There are, I think there are more than five measures of reliability, of which very popular is Cronbach Alpha and Composite Reliability. Cronbach Alpha, it is denoted by Alpha symbol and Composite Reliability, it is denoted by CR. Yes. So that there are more than five measures of reliability. As I said, Cutman's Lambda, again, it is a measure of reliability. But you will hardly find all this reliability measures being reported in, in research papers. In research papers, it's very common to see people report Cronbach Alpha and people report composite reliability. Yes, so reliability is important in research. Now, uh, now let's focus on the validity of measure. See, when I say validity, it means how accurately we are measuring, measuring a particular construct. Again, the same example, uh, intelligence cannot be measured by the length of the hair. So if somebody tries to measure intelligence with the length of the hair, we will say it is an invalid measure. The opposite of valid is invalid. So validity assesses how well a measurement such as test or scale reflects the theoretical construct it is intended to measure. So whenever you are measuring a theoretical construct, how accurately you are measuring that particular construct. Now, how do you decide whether you are measuring something accurately. Let's say if you are using an established scale, the, val the, the buck of validity you pass on to the other person. See, you let me, let me slightly go slow on this. If you read good research papers, people write one argument in their research paper that uh, scales which had previously passed the test of reliability and validity in previous literatures were used to operationalize the constructs in the present study. It means in previous literature, the scale was reliable and valid. And there are many paper, papers which have used those scales and, and they have talked about the scale being reliable and valid. So all those measures which, are, which were reliable and valid in the previous literature has been used in my study in order to operationalize the constructs. So validity will only talk about how well or how accurately you are measuring a theoretical construct. 
Now take example of a construct called organizational identification. OI, organizational identification. Now people have given items to, or, or they have given the manifest variables or indicators to measure organizational identification. Now, how do they come out with the indicators? I think Afrin or somebody was asking that, that uh, can I include items in my constructs? Let's say a construct has three items. Can I include more item into it? Yes, you can. But before including any, any extra item in a predefined operationalized construct, you should ask one question to yourself. Why are you doing so? What will be the benefit? And whenever you increase the indicators in a construct, you should run EFA in order to check. EFA, it means exploratory factor analysis, in order to check whether the extra manifest variables that you have included in the construct, yes, are they relating to the latent construct? So you can definitely include manifest extra manifest variables into your construct, but provided there has to be rational, there has to be a logic. I'll give an example. From my example, I was measuring organizational citizenship behavior among healthcare executives in pharmacovigilance firms. In fact, my PhD is into healthcare. So uh, I use one scale by Lee and Allen. The scale was developed in 2002. And uh, there were eight items to measure organizational citizenship behavior towards the organization. There were eight items. So I collected data. Yes, I reported the results. So after collecting the data, it struck to my mind. And, and after talking to, uh, to my sample, post, uh, post, post analyzing my data, many of the uh, participants said, the items that you included in your OCB measure, actually it has nothing to do with our industry. So when you include some item in your construct, which has nothing to do with their industry, naturally people are going to report neutral. They will give in a scale of one to five, people are going strong, neither agree nor disagree. Because that particular item is not applicable to the industry. So that's why whenever you go for data collection, you should critically reflect on all the items that you are using it. You should go and talk to your sample about the items which you will be giving to them. And they will give you insight that, okay, some of the items that are there in your uh, construct, it is not related to our industry or it is not applicable to us. Why don't you delete it? So let's say if Afrin wants to uh, uh, include more items into her construct, first she should go and interview few of the participants, give them, show them those constructs and ask their opinion. If majority of them say, okay, these three items are not part of my industry, then you can bring few more items into the construct and make the construct more grounded. So there has to be a logic when you bring new items into the construct. And again, bringing a new items into the construct is as good as coming out with a new measure. So slightly again, EFA, CFA route you have to follow is as good as to a certain extent, it is as good as coming out with a new measure skill development. Afrin is there? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, so Afrin, you can include extra items in your construct provided your sample thinks so. Or yes, if the sir. existing items are not capturing what you are intending to capture, then you can think of adding few more items or manifest variables into your construct. Otherwise, mm -hmm. don't do it. If existing yes, if existing scale has has all the items, so in that case you need not go and do. But if you feel and if your sample feels that no, some of the items are missing in the construct, you can go ahead and add it, and you need to write a rationale for it. But bringing a new man manifest variable into an existing construct will amount to running an EFA first and then performing a CF. Yes. So this is how how it should go. There has to be rational. So even the uh, experts panel 
has yeah. suggested me the same that you said that first we must match up the usability yeah. of certain product with the respondents whom we are like you know approaching to yeah so it's 100% clear sir what you had said it's crystal clear for me okay okay fair enough okay thank you sir yeah okay now now please pay attention validity again it's a very uh, when you go for scale development validity is something which is very very instrumental now in research there are four kinds of validity that you need to understand what is your content validity now when i say content validity there is no statistics available here you have to take expert opinion here whatever manifest variables that you have uh, devised you have to go and show it to at least three experts at least three see i'm not see let's say you are developing your own indicators or if you are developing your own measures you should show this measures to at least three experts three experts who are really experts experts in the sense they are i'm i'm not saying ex expert means somebody having 15 or 20 years of experience into teaching no content validity has to done by experts and these experts should be senior or seasoned researchers who have a track record of very good public publication on their own by the way of late there are many uh, senior teachers they can't write few lines but their research scholars write papers and and they write the name of their guide it's very uh, common in india but how to decide an expert it should be your own call it should be based on your intuition you should uh, identify experts who have a very good track record of publication yes and who are very senior and seasoned researchers who, who understand the nuances of research content validity can also be done by your sample now content validity can either be done by experts or it can also be done by your sample go and interview your sample give them do a pilot testing give them your survey and if majority of people feel that this item does not belong to the sector there is no harm in deleting that item from your measure so content validity is done by expert or by sample if you read standard paper people people uh, they take help of senior senior researchers who have very good track record of publication and who understand nuances of research they do the content validity yes okay and again whenever you go for content validity you never write the qualification of uh, the expert in your research paper or in your manuscript so it is you who is going to take a call that who is going to decide the items of the construct uh, uh, the items that you will include in your construct either it could be expert or it could be sample person so but there is no statistics available second is your construct validity in sem now kiran pay attention and others pay attention who are using sem very heavily now uh, construct in sem we normally check construct validity now when i say construct validity it has two parts one is your convergent validity and second is your discriminant validity yes now what is convergent validity again this construct validity again now constructs are of two kinds one is reflective and second is formative so let me talk about both so how do you assess validity in reflective construct as well as formative construct let me talk about reflective construct now what is convergent validity convergent validity means the it let's say if the construct is reflective the items items means manifest variable now i'll call item i'll not use the term manifest variables observed variables the items should have very high correlations if the items have very high correlation among themselves we say convergent validity is achieved and normally there are statistics available there is something known as average variance extracted ave if my ave is greater than equal to 0.50 we say that there is there is a convergent validity to put it simply convergent validity simply says the items that belong from the latent construct should have a very high correlation among themselves and to check those correlations we have ave and we have cr that is composite reliability so ave should be greater than equal to 0.50 and composite reliability should be greater than equal to 0.70 so when we will run all this in 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 r we will see in detail in length but for timing please understand convergent validity means there has to be very high 
correlations between the items and they should converge from the latent constructs. Now, when I say discriminant validity, it means let's say I have three constructs in my model. I have three constructs in my model. Now, when audiences or when participants are answering the statement, they should see all the items separately. Again, discriminant validity talks about uniqueness, means all the constructs, let's say there are three constructs in your, in your survey, they should be unique. Again, please note, when respondents fill your questionnaire, they don't answer constructs, they answer items. Please note this. Whenever a respondent is taking your survey, he is answering item, not constructs. Respondent might not know that what constructs are you measuring. Once you collect the data, then you club item and then you say, okay, these five items are this construct, this six item are this construct and this seven item are this construct. So when audiences have read your responses properly and recorded their responses, in that case, discriminant validity will not be a concern. But if people have gone emotional or if people have not read your responses and randomly or indiscriminately they have filled your survey, in that case, discriminant validity will be a concern. Now, I often come across queries where people write that my discriminant validity is violated. If your discriminant validity is violated, it's an indication that people have not read and recorded your responses. People have not read it properly or people have not understood your question. That's why whenever you go for data collection and you should understand what is your sample, who is your sample, what is the level of their literacy, in which context they are answering it. You should understand all those things. That's why you see some of the standard papers, they have uh, uh, scales which are, which are translated into in, in some vernacular languages or the local languages because if you give, if, uh, let's say, if you give a survey which is in English to a person who doesn't understand English properly, he is, he is bound to answer in a very uh, wrong manner. And in that case, discriminant validity will be violated. So normally, discriminant validity is violated when audiences have not understood your survey. Then in that case, your survey becomes meaningless. Now, in India, Particularly, a lot many research scholars says that I have collected 700 sample size. My sample size is 1,000. My sample size is 1,500. See, what is the use of a 1,500 sample when majority of them have not read and answered it? It is always better to have a 250 sample where people have read and recorded their responses than 1,500 samples where people have not read and recorded their responses. If sample size is less, it is okay provided people have read and recorded their responses. Then in that case, you can test or come out with new explanation of your theory. If you focus on simply on numbers, 1500, 2000, 2500, and people have not read it, then it is just a number. It will not contribute much to your theory. So discipline validity here in SEM, we have two metrics. One is Forner and Lerker criteria. Yes. We compare, again, we'll discuss this in detail, but for timing, I'm just explaining the theory. So one is Forner and Lerker criterion, and second is heterotrait, monotrait ratio of correlations. So to check discriminant validity, there are two statistics. One is FL criterion, which is also known as Forner and Lerker criterion. And second is HTMT ratio of correlations, that is heterotrait, monotrait ratio of correlations. Yes, Sonam, you have any query? Uh, yes, sir. I just wanted to wanted to know. Can you please differentiate between the between these two methods? When to use uh, Forner Lager and when to use HTMT? Okay, and okay. apart from that, I have one more question, sir. I just heard about that now the alpha that we calculate for the reliability and it's outdated. So we uh, we gamma use karna chahiye. Kuch aisa bhi hai. Gamma is there. Okay, okay, so okay. Wo, can you please clarify about okay, this when okay, to use? Okay. okay. First, let me answer, answer your discriminant validity, then I will talk about reliability. See, uh, off late, HTMT is considered to be more robust than Forner and Lerker criteria. Yes, HTMT is more robust. Yes, uh, Forner and Lerker criterion came in 1986, HTMT came in 2015. 
and people have proved it using simulated data that that foreigner and lurker criteria might commit blunders when constructs are somewhat similar so now htmt is considered to be more robust but if you read sonam pls scm literature authors talk about that you should report bootstrapped htmt results where you have confidence intervals so we'll see that sonam sonam to answer your question on discriminant validity you should report both foreigner and lurker as well as htmt sonam you should report both now I'll, to address sonam's concern let me show you uh, stop sharing uh, just a second let me minim can i minimize this no, i need to stop sharing it uh, sonam just pay attention uh, yes. okay it's saying i cannot minimize the screen just a, so just a second sonam i'll sh i'll show you that paper uh, uh, just a second sonam to answer you whenever you are reporting discriminant validity you should report both HTMT as well as foreigner and lurker. See, there is one paper by. Can you see the screen, Sonam? Uh, no, sir. You uh, the screen is not visible. Uh, your okay. yeah, screen. Yeah. I mean, okay. you are visible okay. on the screen. Screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now it is visible. Uh, yes, sir. Now it's yes, visible. Sir. Yeah, Sonam. See, so this is a paper which is published in IMB Review, which is a B category journal. Abusive supervision and coping strategies among Indian professional. Sonam, here you should report both. See, off late, authors are reporting both. See, discount validity. One is foreigner and lurker test, and second is HTMT ratio. So you should report both. But let's say if you want, if 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 uh, if you want to reduce uh, or if you want to uh, curtail on the word limit in your manuscript, if you simply report HTMT, it is perfectly fine. It is perfectly fine. HTMT is more robust. And coming to your second question, reliability Cronback Alpha is outdated. Yes, it is outdated, but still it is being reported and still it is being used. Nothing wrong, wrong, wrong in reporting Cronback Alpha. People report, see, whenever you see standard papers where people have used SEM, people report Cronback Alpha, people report composite reliability, and off late, they report Dijkstra Hansler Row. They also report Dijkstra. Hansler row. So nothing wrong in reporting Cronback Alpha composite reliability and Dijkstra Hansler row. So see uh, to to answer you, see the latest paper or see the latest journals or whichever journal you are targeting where, where you want to send your paper. See what is the standard reporting in those journals. What are they reporting? You need to report that. But in my view, Cronback Alpha it's not outdated. Composite reliability it takes. It factors measurement error. And third is your Dijkstra Hensler row. All these three, you can report it. See, reliability is only an indicator that yes, majority of them have, have, have read it, read and answer the, answer the statements properly. And, and, and the scale is, is achieving its, its mandated target. It is measuring what it is intended to measure. Yes, Sonam, hope I answered your query. Yes, sir. I'm asking this question because uh, sometimes uh, the uh, whenever we are presenting our papers, so they ask us, "Kya apne ye kyu kiya aur ye kyu nahi kiya?" And secondly, uh, I'm in the data collection phase of for my thesis, so I'm just uh, uh, doing the pilot study. So where my ye foreigner like uh, like a test is not uh, giving the good result, but HTMT ratio results are very good. So, why there is a difference see, between these see, two again, tests? Again, again, see, in pilot testing, normally we take a very small sample size. So, if you take a small sample size, reliability and AVE, these are going to be violated soon. So, once you increase the sample size, then in that case, your foreigner lurker test also should produce a decent result. In pilot test, your sample size is small. So, your reliability and validity with foreigner and lurker measure is bound to get violated. But as you increase the sample size, picture will become perfect clear. So in pilot testing, you should only assess the reliability of the measures. That's it. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, one more thing, uh, like uh, out of curiosity, I'm asking this. Huh. Uh, like uh, huh. I, I have checked the Cronbeck Alpha. 
ऑन दी लाइक जो भी डेटा मैंने अभी तक कलेक्ट किया था तो अल्फा इज कमिंग वेरी गुड इट्स अबाउ पॉइंट एट बट एंड बिलो पॉइंट नाइन विच इज एक्सेप्टेबल एंड वेरी गुड बट वेन आई क्लीन माई डेटा सडनली द क्रॉन बैक एल्फा हैज रिड्यूस्ड कुछ कुछ कंस्ट्रक्ट का तो पॉइंट सेवन से भी नीचे चला गया एंड इट्स आफ्टर क्लीनिंग द डेटा वाई इट इट हैज है अगेन आई एम सेंग सी reliability validity will be violated when people have not read your survey uh, again i'll tell you there are 15 people who are pursuing phd under me so i normally tell research scholars and i have one to one meeting with them i said please use paper and pencil method of survey do a gate crashing run from pillar to post go and build rapport with your respondents and tell them to answer when you circulate a google form or survey monkey in majority of the cases people don't understood people don't understand what what they are answering it and they are bound to answer in a haywire manner and in that case reliability and validity gets violated the question is if people are reading and recording their responses people are understand reading understanding and recording their responses reliability validity will be automatically be taken care of and so now just uh, on a 10% sample size it is not advisable to uh, get a very perfect picture so if you are using standard measures to operationalize your constructs you can still go ahead increase the sample size ensure that people read and record their responses have a paper and pencil wala survey then in that case everything will become clear if your cron back alpha is good and if you are deleting certain items but again in 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 when you are running a reliability you should also check which item if you delete your cron back alpha is going to rise uh, let's say if you are using a spss so there there is an option so uh, yes, if you sir, scale an item and item ha, delete if item deleted so, so there try to understand that particularly in a in a reverse coded item where you have a negative worded item or or a negative worded statement so when you reverse code it so there aapka reliability kharab ho jata hai if you have some uh a uh, negative worded item in your survey so in that case you need to delete it in that case you need to delete it but sonam to answer you even uh, precisely uh, uh, a cron back alpha uh equal to or above 0.60 is also decent a cron back alpha above or equal to 0.60 is also okay 0.60 ke niche nahi aana chahiye if it is coming below 0.60 then there is a problem Okay. Sir, it's coming uh, more than point six five, but I was just curious. Point six five, okay. See, in a pilot hey. test, <laughs> ये ये हुआ इसके लिए है. People have not understood your survey. And secondly, if you are getting point six five, it is decent, fair enough. Go and collect a full fledged data. Ensure that people are reading and recording their responses. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, thank okay. you so much, sir. Yeah. Okay. So where I was, ah, uh, so construct validity again, conversion validity. Here we check AVE and composite reliability. There are thresholds: discount validity, corner lerker criteria, HTMT, and now HTMT two also has come. But HTMT is fine. And of late, people are talking that you should report bootstrap uh, HTMT results. Even if you don't report bootstrap HTMT results, it is fine. Simply report or simply state that yes, your constructs are discriminant. Your people have. seen the constructs to be different they have not seen everything as one so discount validity means that when people are recording their responses on the construct they have seen it differently they have not seen everything as one construct that is essentially the idea now predictive validity again this is not a feature in cbsem predictive validity it's there in pls scm you calculate a stats which is known as q square stats q square statistics and which is also known as stone geyser matrix stone geyser matrix we'll see this as of now this is just a theory lecture and we are setting the tone into context don't get confused and 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 my friends even if you don't understand what i'm saying just relax from tomorrow we will have hands on session you will type i will type from here we all will be on the same page but today i have to set the tone into context normally first day it's a very kind of a theory lecture but flow with the flow ask questions be interactive you'll get all the answer so predictive validity you assess only in pls scm not in cbsm now in predictive validity there are statistics available which is known as q square 
कंटेंट वैलिडिटी देर इज नो स्टैटिस्टिक्स कंस्ट्रक्ट वैलिडिटी देर इज स्टैटिस्टिक्स प्रोडक्टिव वैलिडिटी देर इज स्टैटिस्टिक्स क्यू स्क्र नोमोलॉजिकल वैलिडिटी अगेन देर इज नो स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगेन आई थिंक आफरीन वॉज आस्किंग दैट 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 हाउ मेनी कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट शुड बी देर इन द मॉडल so i said please refer a meta analytic paper or a review paper and and see that which are the constructs which are very important and should be there in the model see there are certain constructs which has to be there in the model if you don't include that constructs in the model then there is bound to happen some problem nomologic no, nomological validity is nothing but finding a correlation between the constructs let's say if literature talks about that two constructs are highly correlated it means there is an association between the between those two constructs and that has to be there in your model so nomological validity you see only one statistics which is known as r which is carl pearson's correlation coefficient so whenever you are conceptualizing a model or or framing a model try to have those constructs which are heavily correlated with each other if there is a correlation between them then you can say yes nomological validity is established so to establish nomological validity there is only one measure and which is known as carl pearson's correlation coefficient okay so these four validity measures are there in sem now in pls scm we will focus on construct validity and predictive validity now when we will perform pls scm we will focus on two validity one is your construct validity and second is your predictive validity nomological validity you should do before applying sem in literature review people go for assessing the nomological validity content validity again it is there for scale development or if you want to tweak certain items of your construct then in that case you should go for content validity hope it is clear hello hope yes, it is clear sir. okay uh, abhishek is there abhishek is there felix is there kiran is yes, there yes sir okay so yes, uh, abhishek can you tell me how many number is there how, how many people are there 19 people uh, are 19 19 participants in q 19 people are there it's it's a it's a it's a good number by the way uh, i conducted one free workshop in in the month of september so 350 people registered so on the appointed day only 20 people came and on the last day only four people were left since this is a paid workshop so you can see the number is quite decent uh, sir actually it is a better to have the limited number so that one to one conversation can be possible yeah yeah dr gandali i agree uh, whenever whenever huge number is there na so it becomes difficult to uh, have a good discussion but dr gandali uh, think from organizers perspective more the number yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i can understand so i can understand but uh, so, as a participant uh, we are benefiting in the benefit yeah. now and by, and by the way dr gandali you see uh, whenever such workshops happens only few people raise queries other either they yes, understood sir. everything or they have not understood understood anything okay take it uh, okay. actually for the first session also i couldn't uh, that much attend to uh, because i was in a traffic but uh, when i uh, reached to the home okay. immediately i started to but, but my, my sincere laptop. request to all 18 or 19 or 19 I, i must be the 19th person let me remove myself my sincere request to all 18 people that be there till 10th of march and you will have lot of takeaways from this session yes okay don't skip in between okay so uh, one yes. question sir. yes kiran so this uh, nomological validity that you mentioned that only r is the one which is which can be uh, used to test so uh, is there any index or cut off of that r see first of all uh, uh, again uh, any correlation above 0.35 0.35 uh, will be will be a decent number but kiran uh, i'll i'll give an example kiran i was conceptualizing a model for my phd thesis hmm. so my my final endogenous construct or the main dependent variable was ocb so when i read literature i found that there is one construct which is having a very high correlation with ocb and that came out to be oi that is organizational identification so nomological validity should come out of logic should come out of reason and should also come out of literature now it is natural to assume that people who identify strongly with their organization they are bound to engage in citizenship behavior 
Yes. Okay. Yes. So nomological validity, if other than R, it should also come out with some reason and personal logic. There has to be some logic in 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 deciding nomological validity. Yes. Okay. Okay. Understood. And, and one measure is R. In R is about point point three five. It is good to include it and just check it. Oh. Most to most, what will happen? The hypo the, the alternative hypothesis will not be supported. That's hmm. Okay, structural equation modeling. It's a buzzword. Everywhere, go to any place, people are using SEM. Of late, I have become highly critical of SEM. I would be happier or happiest if I can plan an experiment or rather uh, if I can do a qualitative study. I'll tell you when I, were, when I started learning research, I was more inclined towards pursuing a qualitative research. I am an accidental quantitative researcher by chance and to a certain extent by choice also. But if you if you try to understand my real passion, my real passion would be qualitative research. Talk to people, see pattern, and then theorize it. And that which is called as thematic research or or, or the uh, doing content analysis and NVO software and all, all those things people use it. Second is I'm I'm very much interested in conducting experiments. So if, if some of you want to work with me in future, so uh, we can definitely collaborate and we can do something different other than SEM and all. But SEM, it is a buzzword everywhere. You go to any place, people are using SEM. SEM is essentially used for model testing. It is used for model testing. But again, I'm saying model is simply not uh, putting one constructs uh, against each other. Or simply not showing relationship between between constructs. Model has to be very very genius. I'll give an example. Just last week I was at I I, I was at Kolapur, and I happened to meet some very senior management consultant who are paid in crores for what they do. So there, one person he came out with a model. And that model did not have any theoretical backing. There was no theory in, in, in his model. And uh, this model he used to help a motorcycle company in order to locate where should they uh, position their stores in the city. Let's say if you want to open your, open your showroom or outlet. So which place in the city shall be an ideal place? So... So the, what the consultant did, they employed some hundred people. They made every people stand in all important locations of the city. And they tracked the traffic movement. They tracked the movement of, uh, of, of female uh, uh, commuters. So many parameters they tracked. And they came out with a model as to which should be a perfect place in a city where people should locate their showrooms or outlets. Now, this model is grounded more in logic than in theory. Unfortunately, we are in a race to publish papers. We want to publish papers so that we get plum jobs or for that matter, uh, uh, we get a lot of good feelings. Everybody wants to feel good when they have a publications in, in top-notch journals. But most of the models that you see, even in A star or for that matter, A category journal, okay, people have fit model into the data data pe model dal diya hai actually aisa nahi hona chahiye so again uh, your model what is it answering so whenever you conceptualize a model let's say somebody is somebody is working on utad model or social exchange theory or for that matter let's say social identity theory ask a question that why is this model important and what problem it is going to solve so please ask this question whenever you build a model because building a model is a highly creative art. Building a model is simply not bringing four or five constructs and understanding the relationship between them. Yes. So that is not a good model. Good model is something which comes from which has a bottom to top approach rather than top to down approach. Now, I'll give an example that that you, you take example of private universities in India. The first private university in India 
to my to the best of my knowledge was amity and post amity now lot of private universities are 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 spreading across are, are coming out in india you see private universities they have a very high attrition rate compared to public universities now i did my phd from a central university in a and and i have seen that in central universities people don't resign in fact people pay to get a job because that that is the level of corruption this like lecture is recorded no offense to anybody but to get a plum job in public universities people pay under the table and once people get a job they don't leave it unless the person is really mad they 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 retire from that particular position but if you take example of private in private universities their attrition is very high like i was with somaya vidyar university kiran knows it and um, maine yahi maine ek statement bola ki it's a, it's a new wine in an old bottle i said it's a new wine in an old bottle <laughs> normally people say it's an old wine in a new bottle i said it's a new wine in an old bottle it means all people are product of mumbai university and now they are running a somaya university so where is the newness so <laughs> so i made a very different statement there not to put people down and people are doing a great and fabulous job over there but in my sense how the university should be it was not up to the mark and i felt that okay i should be on my own rather than spending my time there now you can ask a question why do people leave jobs in private university so often than in public university can you come out with a model can you come out with a model explaining why people leave more jobs in a private university than a public university can you come out with a model and can this model be used to to prevent the tide of attrition in private universities yes then that will be a great model again model building is an art it's simply not seeing the nomological validity or simply not seeing r between two constructs and coming coming out with it you see every person is behaving in a model if i ask you a simple question when i circulated this brochure and a data matic research solution there is no website yes there is no social media advertisement about this ek website tak nahi hai data matics ka kuch nahi hai and there was just a qr scanner people trusted and people registered it you know what was the prime attraction for 20 23 people registering the prime attraction was the topic per se if i the topic per se had it been statistic using spss nobody would have registered the prime attraction was 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 the topic itself and the topic was so attractive that people undermined checking at least there's a checking at least typing on linkedin or for that matter on on google that where is this data matrix where is where is it situated this this institute so called institute doesn't even have a website by the way it's just in the idea stage and so but some people might have seen my name no he is a passionate researcher and he speaks well so some people out of trust they would have or i would have forwarded myself personally to those people and they would have registered so you can decide what are the antecedents that, that there are so many antecedents and consequences to everything if you try to focus on the consequences and focus on the antecedents sometimes you come out with an interesting model model is an explanation of a reality please understand whenever you conceptualize a model or when you whenever you devise a model please note that model is explanation of a reality and the better you come close to the reality it means you have done a fabulous job you have done a fabulous job you have to explain reality through the model just imagine somebody coming out with a model and helping a multinational company as to where should they locate their stores in a city which should be the ideal place where they will get maximum sales and maximum traffic and maximum attraction and maximum revenue so that is a model simply don't take three constructs four constructs simply don't try to add new thing into your theory and saying though i have extended the theory in fact when you when you write your theory there are no takers for your theory i'm sorry forget let me not criticize other theory i criticize i'm the biggest critic critic of my own of my own phd research I normally ask him when a research. So, can I interrupt in between? Yeah, go ahead, Afrin. Uh, yes, sir. as per as per the uh, intelligence and the knowledge that you have provided, I would like to conclude that uh, construct should be as such that that is uh, actually having the strength of filling the research gaps. Okay, 
or the solving the research problems okay that's so what i learned with your uh, you know a highly intelligent statement that you framed out right now that okay. your constructs are very important or the model that you build should be as such that that can solve the research problems as well as the questions that you frame out that is a, your research questions okay. okay so your construct should be up to the mark it should be novice it should be novel it should be relatable it should be addressing some cause okay so yeah that, that 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 is it that is itself an argument but again obviously where 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 are we getting all our constructs all our, all our constructs are coming out from some literature all our constructs are coming out from our literature and it doesn't make sense i'll tell you make uh, i had gone to i am ahmedabad and i met one uh, professor from australia her name was elizabeth george and uh, she was discussing there was some research i'll show you that research by the way and you should definitely do such kind of research and uh, just a second uh, just a second i'll show i'll show you this interesting stuff where where you will understand that that okay uh, uh, just a second uh, give me some time let me share the screen first okay now i'm sharing the screen uh, because i cannot minimize the screen when i share okay now the screen visible ha huh? just a second uh, uh kya naam tha us paper ka bahut acha paper tha and this paper got the best paper award in academy of management conference and this paper was uh, uh, aruna ranganathan ha uh, ye paper ek hi author ne likha hai see this paper friends can you see this paper again this paper is published in a star journal ha huh? uh, the artisan and his audience identification with work and price setting in a handicraft cluster in southern india it has some 70 or 80 citations but wonderful paper this paper has cross sectional data time series data longitudinal data experiment data my goodness four research into one and they have come out with a even ethnography my, my goodness ethnography experimental survey data see wonderful research paper get this paper somewhere the artisan and his audience identification with work and price setting in a handicraft cluster in southern india excellent grounded work excellent by the way can you see this construct identification see see we all identify ourselves with our family we, but we don't identify ourselves with our neighbors if something happens to our family we feel that this pain is mine though the pain might be your parents or maybe your sibling but you feel the pain as yours when you feel somebody's pain as your pain that is identification when you don't feel somebody else's pain as your pain you term it as disidentification as a simple and lucid explanation as this this is how i have understood identification okay so uh, coming to this that that model is an explanation of a reality be very wise in in making hope the screen is visible yes okay uh, sorry, i am forgetting that name uh, doctor kya naam tha unka she was talking to us what was doctor from gg ha gandali gandali gandali, gandali, gandali. ma'am ha are you there yes sir okay so let's talk about structure actually sir i uh i like to hear the name of kolapur from your sir because i am native from there sir oh my god currently i'm living in pune <laughs> so recently last week i was in kolapur and uh, uh, uh in I, which I, institute I, or university sir no at shivaji university i went to shivaji university are you in which department sir previously i from 2014 to uh, last year to uh, okay. 2022 i was working in mba department okay 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 uh, Okay. And last year I joined Bharti. I'll tell you, uh, Doctor Gandali, I I really enjoy that place. That place has lot of peacocks. Again, I'm deflecting. I'll come yes, to the yes. research topic. Oh, thousands of peacocks. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it's a wonderful place that you should visit. Huh? By the way, their statistics department is doing fantastically well. And वहाँ पे जाने के बाद पता चलता है कि जितने भी model management वाले लेते हैं उसमें कोई दम नहीं है. I'm sorry, it's a very tall statement and tall claim to make. But उनसे बात करने का लगता है कि क्या model testing चालू है. Time passes. yes okay uh okay let let's focus on the origin of sem okay origin of sem 
see again let's under, understand the uh, historical and we have last half an hour and the floor will be open you can ask as many questions as possible origin of sem see the origin of sem goes back to 1903 or 1902 and in the beginning of the 20th century uh, see uh, there was one uh, uh, there was one british psychologist uh, his name was charles spearman and he introduced a concept called factor analysis now what is factor analysis let's say i'll to put it simply see factor analysis ko agar main agar aapko bahut simply main samjha pao what is factor analysis all of you just pay attention let's say what is factor analysis if, if let's say if i write some vegetables apple uh, or fruits apple and lady's finger yes then tomato I hope my spelling is okay please excuse me suddenly i'm not remembering spelling apple lady's finger tomato or let's say if i say uh, glass and if i say uh, let's say cauliflower you will say sir what are you teaching us then i say jug and then i say grapes then i say let's say what do you call a radish and let's say then i say spoon and let's say I say uh, Chiku. Okay. Let's say I have named certain things before you. Can you bifurcate? How many items are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you have 10 items before you. Can, can you bifurcate them? Can you bifurcate them into 3? So we have fruits, fruits cutlery. we have vegetables, and third, what we have? We have utensils. 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 So this is nothing but factor analysis. Okay, if I ask you a basic question that what are the disadvantages of online learning? You will identify four or five reasons. In online learning, face-to-face -face connect is missing. Online learning is monotonous. By the way, I've written one stupid paper. Huh? By the way, I, I don't have many, too much. I'm just trying to break the ABDC rank. Where it may, I think Kiran has some publication in B category. She is more senior than me. Kiran has a very good paper in B category. General ke andar. She, is, she is doing a fabulous job. So I wrote a paper that factors in inhibiting online learning experience. If you go to, I don't have much citation. Huh? By the way, I'm an emerging researcher. So I wrote a paper that, uh, again, I wrote a paper that, again, I wrote a paper that, I will send the time. So, I have factor analysis. Tha. Factor analysis we do every day. Factor analysis is nothing but, let's say you have used 20 items. So, these 20 items can be, can be, uh, can, can be shortened to, let's say, 3 or 4 major items. So, here I had written few vegetables. Later, I clubbed into fruits, vegetables, utensils. This is nothing but factor analysis. Yes. So the concept of factor analysis was given by a British psychologist, Charles Spearman. And he introduced the concept of factor analysis. And later this factor, see again, CFA. CFA is nothing but again, again, it's an advanced version of EFA. So uh, you apply EFA when you don't know the underlying factor structure. You apply EFA jab aapko underlying latent construct pata nahi hai. When you don't know the underlying latent construct, you apply EFA. What EFA does, it, it groups similar items and it just separates them. So EFA separates or groups items. And then later on seeing the item, you name the construct. On seeing the items, you name the construct and you say, okay, when you ran EFA, you identified five factors and you do the nam karan or you name all those five, five factors. CFA is basically done. CFA is also known as theory testing or measurement model testing. You confirm whether your data is fitting that particular measurement model or not. So EFA is an exploratory technique. CFA is a confirmatory technique. You are just confirming. Ki jo theory bolta hai, mera data usme fit hota hai ki nahi. Yes. So EFA is exploratory, CFA is confirmatory. Actually, both are one and the same. So the roots of CF uh, of SEM can be traced back to 1904. Sorry, I was saying 1902, 1903, when Charles Spearman he came out with the concept called exploratory factor analysis. Yes, okay. 
Now, I, on a very uh, serious note, people normally laugh on me. I, on a very serious note, I say that take a topic where EFA is going to be. If you are doing a, now many of your research scholars, take a, take, take a research topic where you can really apply EFA. Because when you apply EFA, actually you are coming out with some new measure or new some theory. Yeah, EFA is something very important. But again, uh, methods should not decide what research you should take. Your research should decide the method. It's other way around. So uh, again, Spearman, he, he was working on intelligence and he identified some common factors between intelligence. And he said, one is your general factor and one is specific factor. Now, uh, see, see, uh, what it, what is it if, if you have to define intelligence? How would you define intelligence? See, intelligence is the ability to relate wisely to the to the stimuli around us. If people don't relate wisely to the stimuli around them, then they are they, they will be called as insane. So, intelligence means means using your head. To, to, to solve your problems and relate wisely to the external circumstances. Now, when Spearman was working on intelligence, he identified what, what makes a person intelligent. And later on, he bifurcated those items into two. One is general factor, which everybody has. One is specific factor. So general factor means everybody has this and there is one specific factor. You see, some people are, are uh, linguistically intelligent. Take example of Kumar Vishwas. Kumar Vishwas, he sings wonderful poetry is and and gaane vine gata hai tarpan arpan ke now kumar vishwas ke paas na ye jaban ka intelligence bahut hai you see most of the teachers they are very they have a specific intelligence of their tongue jaban ke bahut intelligent hote hai jaban ke dhani hote hai bolte na jaban pe saraswati baithti hai so that is a specific intelligence and one there is a general intelligence general intelligence means the person can solve his problem the person can read write understand this you you may call it as a general intelligence and then there is a specific intelligence, either it could be of singing, it could be of music, or it could be of, of giving wonderful speeches. Now, Hitler was very intelligent, given, given his speeches, but he was a stupid man when he attacked Russia. People will not call him intelligence. In the middle of the war, you are targeting a big country and bringing that country into war. So, when Spearman was working on intelligence, he said there are two facets of intelligence. One is your general intelligence, and second is your specific intelligence. So, that is how he came out with factor analysis. So again, these are some of the theories that you can reflect. Factor analysis provide a method to explore. Again, so when I name some 10 items before you, all of you segregated into vegetables, fruits, and utensils. So what factor analysis does, it explores the underlying latent variable, uh, underlying latent variable that might influence the construct. So latent developments in path analysis, later developments in path analysis was developed by Civil right in 1920s influenced the conceptualization of SEM. Then civil right, he started working on the latent constructs or he came out with, with further explanation in SEM. Yes, it's just, just a theory. Just, just look it so that tomorrow there is no doubt that when should you use SEM. Yes, okay. So again, then Major Philip to SEM came in 1970s when Carl Joreskog, just remember, the father of CB SEM is Carl Joreskog. And it was he who came out with the very first software that is known as Lizrael. Lizrael, you know, now IBM Amos is very common. Afrin is using Amos for, for uh, confirming her theories. Now, the pioneer or the person who gave us SEM is Carl Joreskog. Carl Joreskog. Yes, just remember. Now, here you see. Software packages like Lizrael. Lizrael stands for linear structural relations. By the way, none of the structural equation modeling test nonlinear relationships. None of the structural equation modeling, neither CBSM nor PLSSEM, they don't test uh, uh, nonlinear relationship. They only test linear relationships. By the way, most of the phenomena in real life are nonlinear. And unfortunately, SEM is not devised to handle nonlinear relationships. That's one of the biggest drawbacks of SEM. So, so Lizrael was again, huh, yes, yes. Sir, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, actually, nonlinear uh, means, can you give an example? Because all the relationships are based on cause and effect, right? Uh, but but I'll tell you, Kiran, see, Kiran, just pay attention. Good question. See, this is an inquisitive mind. Huh? 
Kiran just paid attention. It's a very good yes. question. I must appreciate you. And you are a very senior research researcher according to me. <laughs> so please don't say okay. that. Okay. Let's say uh, uh, let's say this is performance and this is leadership, Kiran. Yes? Yes. See, if you improve the quality of leadership, performance increases, performance increases. But at a certain point, I think it's linear. <laughs> By default, it is getting linear. Just a second, linear should not be linear. Kiran, now pay attention. Yes, See, sir. if the quality of leadership improves, performance will improve. Can le leaders impact performance? Right. But at a certain point of point in time, no matter, even if you improve the leadership, performance is not going to improve. So this is a curvy linear. This is a curvy linear relationship. Aap kya mante ho ki leadership impacts performance. This is wrong. Right. Okay. If leader impacts performance, if performance is caused by leader, it means as you increase leadership, your performance will keep on increasing. No. At a certain point in time, no matter, even if you improve the quality of leadership, performance is going to bend down. Okay. Focus on many concepts. You see that there are most of the concepts, they will have this sort of relationship. They will have this sort of relationship. And unfortunately, SEM is not designed either PLSSEM or CBSEM to take care of nonlinear relationships. Ah, the beauty of PLSSEM is that when you go for model robustness checks, there you go and report whether linearity, non-linearity effects are there in your model or not. That's it. CB SEM to khamosh betta hai. CB SEM entirely remains mum when estimating linear relationships are concerned. It's mum. It doesn't talk about any non-linear relationship. Yes? Okay. okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Lizrael, I'm Amos, EQS, M plus. By the way, you should explore other than you should also check M plus. Huh? M plus is the way. Now you see uh, top notch journals, they are using M plus in, in, instead of Amos and all those things. By the way, you hardly find paper where people are using R to, <laughs> to perform SEM and all. Hardly you will see. Huh? People are either using Amos, M plus, Edenco, or Smart PLS4. But hardly you will see people are using R. You see, R is getting very popular. But when it comes to reporting in top-notch journals, people don't use R. Though R is very simple, but people don't use R. <laughs> that's that's one of the what you call as uh, irony of R that top-notch journals may R ko use in R. Sir, if we use R in our thesis, we will reject it. Why do we R? Only, see, Sonam, only stupid people will reject. By the way, my paper B category is being rejected in B category. I'm thinking that it's being rejected in R category. My paper is coming in B category in B category today, not tomorrow. Now, there's been three rejections in it, Sonam. And I know that Sonam, tell me, I believe in R. I mean, R is like, I mean, it's been a lot of fun. I've conducted a lot of workshops at Pan India level on R. So, I love R like anything. मतलब रात को कोई 12 बजे उठा उठा के बोलेगा ना कोडिंग करो मैं कोडिंग करना चालू कर दूंगा सो बट ऐसा नहीं है सोनम नॉर्मली क्या होता है मालूम है क्या मैं आपको एक एग्जांपल देता हूं सोनम कि मैं एक बार आया उदयपुर गया था तो वहां पे मैं एक बहुत बड़े प्रोफेसर को मिला था ही वाज फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलियन नेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी तो उन्होंने क्या बोला मालूम है क्या कि वो 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 आर से डरते हैं आर से डरते इन द सेंस माने वो क्या बोलता है अरे मेरे को जब प्रॉपर्टी सॉफ्टवेयर है ड्रैग एंड ड्रॉप ऑप्शन है कौन बैठ के कोडिंग करेगा एंड बाय द वे आर इज टाइम कंज्यूमिंग सोनम इनफैक्ट आई हैव आई हैव रिटर्न माय पीएचडी थीसिस ऑल माय एनालिसिस यूजिंग आर एंड आई यूज्ड टू गो एंड सिट एट आई एम अहमदाबाद छुट्टी लेके जाता था वहां पे बैठ के मैं कोडिंग करता था पूरा दिन और कोडिंग करते करते मुझे महीनों लग गए हैं माय एंटायर पीएचडी इज ऑन आर अभी मेरा ये जो बी कैटेगरी में पेपर आएगा वो भी आर पे ही आएगा मैंने आर ही आर ही लिखा है उसके अंदर ऐसा नहीं है सोनम इफ यू यूज आर योर पेपर विल रिजेक्टेड अनफॉर्चूनेटली क्या हो रहा है कि जो टॉप नॉट जर्नल्स में जो पेपर आ रहा है ना सोनम वो सब ज्यादातर सीजन रिसर्चर्स है और जो सीजन रिसर्चर्स होते हैं ना दे आर वेरी गुड विद प्रोपराइटरी सॉफ्टवेयर क्योंकि वो वो बड़े बड़े इंस्टीट्यूट से जुड़े हुए हैं अभी जैसे मैं आपको बताऊं कि ऑल टॉप नॉज इंस्टीट्यूशन इंडिया में ही ले लो ना सारे आई ले लो आई ले लो एनआईटी ले लो आई ले लो वो सब लोग ने प्रोपराइटरी सॉफ्टवेयर खरीद के रखे है सो सबको क्या लगता है ठीक है ना प्रोपराइटरी सॉफ्टवेयर में काम जल्दी हो जाता है सो दैट्स वाई पीपल आर यूजिंग प्रोपराइटरी सॉफ्टवेयर 
and that's why you see there is predominance of proprietary softwares in at least top notch journals are concerned so now r ke wajah se paper reject nahi hoga paper reject hoga because of some methodological issues or because of poor theory or because of some other issues अगेन मैं मैं देर इज देर इज एन एक्सेप्शन टू वॉट आई एम सेन मोर क्वेश्चन जब हम आर में ये पी एल एस एम अपना रन करेंगे तो वी वी हैव टू मैंशन दी रेफरेंसेज टू सपोर्ट आर रिजल्ट तो जो पी एल एस एम पे जो रन हुआ है से फॉर एग्जाम्पल हमें कोई वैल्यू सी आर वैल्यू अगर हमें दिखानी है कि रेफरेंस में देना है कि ये वैल्यू और इतनी एक्सेप्टेबल है तो फिर वो हम वो पेपर से ले सकते हैं ना आई मीन उसको आर वाले पेपर से लेने की जरूरत तो नहीं है नहीं नहीं ऐसा कुछ नहीं आप साइटेशन कहीं से भी दे सकते हो आर में खाली एक साइटेशन आपको देना पड़ता है मैं आपको बताऊंगा एक तो पैकेज का साइटेशन देना पड़ता है और एक तो आर सॉफ्टवेयर का दो साइटेशन देना पड़ता है कि आर का अपना एक साइटेशन है आर टीम का एंड सेकंड पैकेज का साइटेशन होता है कि आप लेट्स से यू यूजिंग सेमिनार पैकेज तो इट इज गिवन बाय वो स्वामी अरे एंड डैंक्स उसका देना पड़ेगा बाय द वे जो पी एल के जो साइटेशन है वो आपको हेयर के ही देने पड़ेंगे और जो प्राइमर और पार्शल लिस्ट जो बुक है ना उसी के देने पड़ेंगे यस ओके ओके किरण मेरे को इसके बारे में ज्यादा मालूम नहीं है बट मैं किरण एक बात जो बोलूंगा जो आपको बहुत हेल्पफुल होगा सॉफ्टवेयर इज जस्ट अ टूल इट कुड बी एनी थिंग कोई सीनियर रिसर्चर होगा ना वो ये देखेगा कि व्हाट हैव यू कंट्रीब्यूटेड ही विल नॉट फोकस ऑन जामोवी आर और फॉर दैट मैटर एनी एनी अदर सॉफ्टवेयर दो जामोवी इज फ्री सी यू आइडर यू कैलकुलेट योर रिजल्ट इन एसपीएसएस और फॉर दैट मैटर मिनी टैब और फॉर दैट मैटर ये स्टाटा और फॉर दैट मैटर एनी सॉफ्टवेयर लाइक एस रिजल्ट वही आने वाला है अप्रिल सो इन माई अंडरस्टैंड सी नॉर्मली क्या होता है जितने भी टॉप नॉट जर्नल होते हैं ना वो सब बड़े बड़े इंस्टीट्यूट से निकल रहे हैं बड़े बड़े और वहां पर क्या है कि प्रॉपर्टी सॉफ्टवेयर अवेलेबल है सो देर पीपल गो एंड 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 मैं परफॉर्म दी एनालिस इन मिनी टैप दे आर परफॉर्म दी एनालिस इन स्टार्टअप वो नहीं लिखेगी कि मैंने और जामो भी वो क्यों यूज करेगा जब उसके पास कोई अच्छा चीज है ना आफरीन मेरे हिसाब से आफरीन टू आंसर यू सॉफ्टवेयर इज जस्ट अ टूल आप कोई भी सॉफ्टवेयर यूज कर लो आंसर तो वही आने वाला है चाहे आर यूज करो चाहे मिनी टाइप यूज करो आंसर कंपेयर कर लो आंसर विल बी वन एंड द सेम थिंग बट ये जो पेपर आ रहे हैं ए स्टार और ए में दे आर कमिंग फ्रॉम वेरी टॉप नॉज इंस्टीट्यूट यस और वो लोग के पास प्रॉपर्टी सॉफ्टवेयर है अभी जैसे के जे सोमया है के जे सोमया में भी लोग लिख रहे हैं ए में ए स्टार में तो वहां पर क्या के जे सोमया ने खरीद के रखा है अपना एस पी एस एस और क्या नाम है कि आपका ये एमोस तो में लेट्स से अगर कोई अगर वो कोई सॉफ्टवेयर तो वो वो थोड़ी ना बताएगा मैंने जामोवी यूज किया है वो भले जामोवी यूज किया होगा लेकिन वो लिखने को क्या लिखेगा कि मैंने एसपीएसएस भी यूज किया है लिखना तो आपको है ना लिखना तो आपको है ना यू कैन राइट इट बट गॉट योर पॉइंट सर हां बट यू शुड नेवर राइट कि मैंने स्टाटा यूज किया है क्योंकि स्टाटा खरीदना पड़ता है अभी मैं आपको बताऊं मैं एक बार अभी आईआईटी भुवनेश्वर गया था कुछ दिन पहले तो वहां पे मुझे किसी ने स्टाटा दिया मैं आपको स्टाटा दिखाता हूं फ्रेंड्स एक सेकेंड ना मैं स्टाटा दिखाता हूँ तो मेरे को वहां पे एक आईटी से जस्ट सेकेंड जस्ट सेकेंड ना कहा से जाऊ मैं हाँ यहाँ पे सी समबडी गेव मी स्टाटा ये देखो स्टाटा है स्टाटा समबडी गेव मी स्टाटा दिस इज अ सॉफ्टवेयर स्टाटा एंड समबडी टोल अरुण डोंट यू स्टाटा बिकॉज इन स्टाटा यू हैव टू गिव साइटेशन एंड साइटेशन कभी भी वो इंस्टीट्यूशन के एड्रेस से आता है तो स्टाटा मेरे पास है मेरे पास मिनी टैब भी है आई हैव मिनी टैब आई है I have IBM, I was, I have many software in my PC. But let's say if I'm writing paper, after it, I will say, okay, I've used IBM, I was, I've used Smart PLS four. I will write a lie. But I normally, I see. I'm telling you, after it, I'm writing a paper. 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 And uh, ये पेपर अगर मैं आपको दिखाऊं तो आई एम वेरी आई आई ऑलवेज राइट द ट्रूथ वॉट एवर सॉफ्टवेयर दैट आई यूज बिकॉज आई नो दैट दैट सी यर आई एप कैटेगोरिकली मैंशन स्टैटिस्टिकल एनालिस वो परफॉर्म यूजिंग आर वर्जन फोर पॉइंट टू पॉइंट थ्री एंड ओपन सोर्स सॉफ्टवेयर एंड दिस इज द साइटेशन 
मॉडल टेस्टिंग इन्वॉल्व द यूज ऑफ कंपोजिट दिख रहा है क्या स्क्रीन नहीं ना सॉफ्टवेयर only in the statistical analysis part you report jamovi stata whatever it is rest no where you report it and rest aap kya karte ho aage chal ke aap aage chal ke aise diagram vigram bana ke report karte ho this is my conceptual tested model and this is my conceptual model and numbers are going to be the same in any software so i don't think so that your paper will be rejected just because you have used jamovi or any other software yes okay so one more question i have that for Haan. a category journal one of my paper got rejected just because i have used the uh, you know established theory or the theory that was already been used uh, 12000 times in uh, research papers okay. for example uta ut model so okay. the uh, journal of information system it was they said ki we are not accepting tam or uta ut model your paper is very strong see, so again, is it again again why see in top notch journals it is the novelty of idea that is given more weightage than any theory which is tried and tested see again uh, what do you think you are the only person who are working on utad there are there are lot many knowledge see what, what's the difficulty of cross sectional research see when you say psychological capital is related to oi and ocb there are thousands of papers who are who are talking about this relationship now you went and and tested and you 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 are also saying See, one thousand paper, one thousand papers are saying that your relationship is. You also went ahead and tested this relationship. So, what is your contribution to contribution to research? Already, what you are, what you have tested, it is known by everybody. So, if you simply beat around the bush, your research paper will be rejected, citing novelty, because there is no novel, there is nothing new. So, come out with some alternative experiment. That, that's why, see, you see, that's why off late. What, see, what is the buzzword? What is the trend now? Now people are con uh, conducting longitudinal studies. People are conducting time series studies, or people are conducting two wave studies. First they will conduct a study, then after a gap of three four months they will conduct one more study, and then they will say how these two studies are interrelated. So of late this is the trend, or let's say when I showed you Aruna Ranganathan's paper. So in one paper there is ethnography, there is one uh, what you call as time series data, there is one. Uh, uh what do you call as qualitative data so many things are there so top notch journals a or a star mein kya hota hai ki it is the novelty that matters and again to answer you sonam that whenever you read papers you don't settle for c category or b category paper if you want to go for a category journal so if you really want to target a category or a star you try to read papers from those journals only and see how they are theorizing and again sonam to answer you human mind is known for imagination if you can imagine it things in a very different perspective and 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 come out with a with a theory explaining that imagination or come out with some beautiful explanation then those journals your paper will be accepted hope sonam i answered your query yes so not not everything no <laughs> okay so how much time i have i have i think uh, none of the boys are asking any question initially abhishek was active and only female participants are active why but i appreciate uh, i have also thinking uh, like uh, i was working on the theory of planned behavior and in management lot of the people are working on the theory of planned behavior so emerald journal emerald publication has rejected my paper saying that uh, you have to uh, cite more recent uh, most recent journal who are working on the theory of planned behavior yes correct see that that's a see i'll tell you uh, there was one professor khatri who was from forgetting his name he he has given he has written one paper why do papers get rejected he has written one paper as to why do papers get rejected and the prime reason is that that there are not many recent studies are included in your paper so that's why and and second i'll tell you one more professor is prof, uh, the uh, professor ernesto lorana from iim ahmedabad uh, he always says that 
that uh, if you are doing a research in India and if you don't cite Indian authors, he will reject your paper. You are doing a research in India, but there is no Indian authors that you have cited. So, sir will reject your paper. He said, in India, I research karo, the Indian authors to be cited. Karo. But then, see what work has been done in India. See, unfortunately, all our work, all our constant UTAT and all these are not developed in India. Or theory of plant behavior, this is not developed in India. So why not see those studies which are written in India or which are developed in India and try to cite them, Abhishek. So I think that that's a valid argument, Abhishek. And, and now you fine tune that paper and send it to some other journal so that, and let's see what's, what's the opinion, what's the response. Take it in a very positive way. By the way, no, when you're... I'm taking it in a positive way, but what if the uh, if there is very less study has been done in India on a particular topic? No, this is what we feel, Abhishek. And see, no, but but uh, but the thing is that now most of the in universities uh, they just focus on the citation. If you're taking a citation of the Scoopers Journal or a Web of Science, then only they take your paper for the uh, accept the paper in their Scoopers Journal and all. See, that, 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 of course, quality, journal matrix matters, scopus, web of science, all this thing matters, Abhishek. But the question is about literature review. You really have to uh, do a thorough literature review or uh, uh, rather you can also write, write a counter mail to the editor and if the editor is helpful, you can just ask, sir, which are the recent theories I did my research, I'm unable to locate it, can you help it? And let's say if you're lucky, he will he will send you a couple of, couple of papers. But see, Normally, uh, our literature, so, see, I, I'll tell you, uh, presently, I'm not employed anywhere. I work from my home and uh, I'm more part of a gig economy. Now, when I do literature, review, you know what, what, what will come to my rescue? Google Scholar will come to my rescue. Yes, IEEE Explore come to my rescue. G JSTOR will come to my rescue. So that there are credible uh, portals where you should be very genius in 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 downloading papers and seeing which papers have been done in India. So maybe uh, you have to explore the database in a very uh, wiser way and see see how, how you can come across the latest papers where, where your theory is being talked about or your theory is being critically evaluated. You should you should try to focus on that. And there is no alternative. When the, when the editor says that you should include uh, recent citation, then go and find some recent citation. And and many, many a time we, we think that he is study mahi kar rao, but already people have created knowledge on that. We are not new. So again, be open, be critical to your own self and, and, and go ahead and do it. Yes. And the best thing is that try to collaborate with some, some, now the paper that I showed you just now, I've collaborated, collaborated with a US professor and we both are facing rejection. And the cherry on the cake is that, that professor has not, not lost hope on me. So today I was supposed to send this paper to again big category journal, but today my workshop was there. So I was making this PPTs and I was just planning for my workshop. I could not upload it. Maybe today, tomorrow I have a lecture. I, I have a visiting faculty and morning I will go there evening. I will talk to y'all. But, but Abhishek, yes, try to find it. Abhishek, there is no way out. You have to locate it. You have to locate it. Some uh, work sir, will be there. Even I so, want to add one thing, sir, in this. Uh, I love go ahead. Please so, go ahead. Uh, sir, even sometime what I felt in... Uh, even connecting with the professors in different university. Uh, I taught in um, Maldives and Mauritius. I found that uh, even the acceptance of the paper depends on the institution where you are working. Like you are working in a normal institution, they will reject your paper. Yeah, This is my experience. Sir. Love, unfortunately, it is there. Uh, and probably uh, <laughs> this is the reason that I'm not affiliated to institute, which is causing my paper to reject. But, Even a third uh, class paper you send from IM or IITs, they will accept it. But if you are sending a wonderful paper, so that from is a politics of publication. That is politics of publication. So uh, of course, it, 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 I'm not denying it. It is there, but still uh, try to find it out. Good journal where where really editors are ethical and they will they will they will see the contribution to the theory rather than seeing the tag and all those things. And I and I personally feel that the world has lot many good people. The world has lot many good people and and. And and try to try to uh, randomization hota hai. Ek nahi to dusra, dusra nahi to tisra. But Lau has made a, a valid argument and and I agree to it. And you see, there are a couple of professors uh, or a couple of journals. You have to include include their citation into it. You have to cite their papers also. Otherwise, they will be very. Uh, yes, sir. In order to increase their metrics, sir, they uh, 
often say to you that uh, please add our some research uh, in, into your references to increase their reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fairly agree with you, love. Yes. Is sorry, there, there. Ek, 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 ek problem. Sir, one more the question. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Sona, madam. Uh, one more question. Sona, ma'am, one second. We'll go to uh, love to yes. then we'll come to Sona, madam. Uh, sir. Love, sir, go ahead. Same, I, I found even in literature, sir, more people often use same for primary data analysis, not for secondary. Is it good for secondary analysis or not? Yes, yes, of course. See, see when, when you say that, that things are related with each other. So wherever you find correlation between the constructs, nothing wrong. Even in secondary data, you find correlations. Yes. Now inflation, let's say inflation is connected to so many other indicators. So you can definitely take secondary data and, and, and run a SEM. Nothing wrong with it. But yes, you are correct. Like people are applying SEM particularly for primary data. Yes. Okay. You are correct. Secondary data also, it can be used. It can be used. See, again, the question is try to find the literature. Again, that's that's a billion dollar question. I think what Yes, sir. It is very it. difficult to find it on Google Scholar also because that's uh, why you should you should keep up a bird's eye view, talk to people and keep on regularly scanning. See, normally where do we scan journals? Mm -hmm. Library may even see I regularly go to IM Ahmedabad. And on the IM Ahmedabad bookshelf, you know which journals I see IMB review, Vikalpa. Even I'm I'm Ahmedabad, I'm talking about Vikalpa, IMB review. And some one or two American Psychological Association journals, even uh, and 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 a uh, lot of Indian journals. So there also and normally people use EBSCO and and uh, uh, some some other uh, portals to access. So mil nahi pata hai. So normally what you see, I, I'll tell you uh, 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 interesting thing. Sir, if you get somewhere, sir, uh, please share it with me also. Uh, some uh, secondary database analysis somebody has if done. If I come across, I will share with you. If I come across, I'll share with you. Okay. So I'll show you one thing. No, see, normally what I do, uh, I've created this tab, Journals Watch. So these are some of the journals that I regularly watch. Journal of Business Research, Journal of Applied Structural Modeling, Journal of Consumer Research, it is A-star, HRD Quarterly. Again, this is A-star. Journal of Organization Behavior A category, Journal of Business Ethics. So you should you should create a watch. Regularly, you should watch the journals. Then let's say qualitative papers. I'm very interested in qualitative papers. So I, I just, whatever papers I find, I just write it here. Then experiments, I, I want to conduct one workshop on experiments. So in the month of May, so how to conduct experiments. So I'm just reading about it. And once my reading gets over, if I'm confident, I will conduct one workshop on how to conduct experiments. So you should, you should create your own journals watch. And, and you'll definitely come across some good papers. And for, for all new and budding researchers, I would strongly insist that read A-star and A-category journals. Yes, and, and get down to B, get down to C when you find that there is really a dearth of knowledge in A and B, A-category. See, again, uh, research involves a lot of sacrifice. A lot of sacrifice. Uh, and uh, co collaboration also, also matters that whom are you collaborating with and all those things matters. So... Yeah, there, there are, I fairly agree with love that there are some valid points that are need, need to consider. So uh, what we'll do is that tomorrow we'll straight away start from uh, all those things. From uh, Today's time is over, by the way. Let me talk to you and uh, we'll take one or two query and tomorrow we'll complete one or two more slides are there. We'll complete and tomorrow we'll, tomorrow entire day R will be there. Tomorrow don't miss, miss your class. Be there on time and flow with the flow. Because I am very fast in using R and you will flow with the flow and you will enjoy tomorrow's session. So any query, one or two. And, and I, I appreciate that so many people share your observations. By the sir, way, I have one question. Yes, Afrin, go ahead. Yes, yes sir. So uh, as if, if I am working entirely on my paper, research mm. paper, for mm. example, I have written server call paper and so on on Mumbai Metro. So it has been selected in Q2 of the Scopus. And okay. I become the second author in a collaboration part just because okay. i belong to like you know i'm not working full time i'm just a visiting professor because okay. my daughter is very small okay. so is it necessary that i must be the second author or what is a like you know see, consequence see, I, of being I, I tell a second you, I tell you. there are a couple of institutions when you apply for jobs no they they write a condition that you should be the corresponding author you should be the corresponding author there are a couple of institutes some institution if you apply for jobs, they will they will want you that you should have minimum two publications in A category or B category where you should be the corresponding author. They mention it very categorically. There are a lot many institutions who are flexible that even if you have two or three papers in top-notch journals, even if you're second author, it doesn't matter to them. But it is always advisable. Afrin, if you have worked hard, you will put your name first. Afrin, let's say... If you yes, have, sir. Yes, sir. You should all... See, if you have worked... Like, let's say I'm, I'm writing this paper... 
my guide is there and American professor is there. So I have written my name first, American professor second and my guide third. Yes. Okay. So if let's say if your contribution to the paper is huge, you should never shy away in writing your first name. Yeah. Got it, sir. Uh, Got I it. Have... So is it matter that I'm a visiting professor, so I can't be the first? No, no, it's not like this. It's not like this. You simply write the name okay. of your visiting institution or you simply write independent researcher. Now, see, I'm submitting my paper. You know what, what I write? I write data, uh, chief research analyst, data matrix research solutions. I write this. No problem. Yes, sir. Got it. Or you can write, I'm an independent, simply write independent researcher. Or rather, that will be okay. Okay, any other query? But I appreciate quality questions, quality observations, and I, I don't claim that I do everything under the sky. Your your contribution, your observations, your questions are very, very important in this workshop. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, uh, I'm having... Okay. Let, 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 so, uh, let's come to Sonam, then we'll come to Felix, sir. Sonam, go ahead, Sonam. Then we'll uh, later we'll go to Felix, sir. Uh, sir, this uh, situation like mere saath bhi hui thi, like I'm a research scholar, so I have submitted my paper. So, वहाँ से मुझे rejection आया था uh, मेरा और मेरी guide का ही नाम था वैसे उसमें. तो उन्होंने तो ये कहा था कि आप और दो तीन authors के साथ काम करिए. तो some of people have told me कि research scholar का नाम पहला होता है ना तो एक impression जाता है कि paper quality का नहीं होगा. नहीं नहीं ऐसा नहीं. It's it's a stupid argument. No 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 no. So, Nam, you should always write your first name. If you are a research scholar, you should first name aapka hona chahiye. Second name, baad mein jo bhi aapko jiske saal collaborate karna hai, usko daliye. But please include those people who have at least contributed. And so, Nam, nothing wrong. See, so, Nam, you, you never, see, you know, my, my, my three papers are rejected. I'll tell you reason. Mera ek paper teen jaga reject hua hai. Now I'm sending for both. First, uh, am I, this, uh, first, uh, first journal rejected citing weak mediation. Because that journal doesn't consider mediation in cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional data mein mediation bolna bahut bhaari hai unke liye. Yes, second journal says ki hamare scope mein nahi bethta hai. Aapka paper hamare scope mein nahi bethta hai. Aur woh editor itna achha tha, usne mujhe 3-4 jana ke naam diye ki yaha yaha bhejo. Third journal ne mera paper reject kiya, citing ki aapka jo research methodology hai, woh hamare scope mein nahi bethta hai. Third paper rejected ki aapka jo research methodology, woh hamare scope mein nahi bethta hai. Now, fourth paper I am sending, let's see what they will say. Loga Gyara Baraba reject hota hai. I know people Gyara Baraba. I have cross sectional paper ko nikal lena. Q2 may be bhari padta hai. So, but doesn't matter. Don't lose hope. Again, see, map ko batao. I am conducting this workshop. But mere sare paper, mera ek paper web of science mein, baki, baki do UGC care mein hai. But still, I have not lost hope. And I am 40 years old. Imagine, 40 mein par kar chuka hoon. And I don't have a job. I'm a more part of a gig economy now, freelancer and all. Mere par kitna pressure hai ki baba B category mein nikalo, A category mein nikalo aur kisi achche business school ko pakado. So you can't understand my plight and my pressure. So mere dimag mein bohut sare ideas hai lekin I'm multiple shock because I have to generate revenue for my family and sitting at home and all. So many things are there. But don't lose hope, Sonam. You write your first name without hesitation. Let's go to Felix sir. Felix, Felix sir, over to you. Sir, uh, you said that for thesis, uh, you used uh, both uh, R uh, for uh, coding as well as for uh, writing the thesis. Did you yeah. use R uh, Markdown uh, application, sir? It is, it is. R Markdown application you used, sir? No, no. Uh, see, first of all, in my thesis, I have used entirely R. So oh. I, I have just reported it that I have used. I'll show you my thesis uh, uh, just a second. Uh. Uh, uh, just to show Felix, sir, my thesis. My thesis is entirely on R. Because I'm well versed with R, so I use R. So this is my final thesis, Shodh Ganga. And you see, uh, this is my topic. Pathways to OCB, role of psychological resources, LMX and EA. And if I, if I take you down, uh, this is the model that I've tested, which I call it a stupid model. I am the biggest critic of my own thesis. Let's model to test it, who has to use it, who has to use it. And if you go down, Felix, sir, so here you see all codings I've written in the annexure. I've written all the codings, Felix. Felix, sir, can you see? No, sir. No, sir. So here, see, I've, I've written all the codes and syntax. So oh. now when I conduct workshops and sometimes I, uh, if I want to refer, I refer all the syntax. You see, I've written all the syntax in the annexure part. So nothing wrong because if you have used R, write all your syntax and it's better. And 
And here I've gone, I've, in PLS SEM, I perform every analysis, all the latest analysis in my thesis, included everything. And yes, Felix G, you can, you can definitely uh, use R for your thesis, no harm with it. But again, yes. no, uh, uh, for me, there was a pressing need. I was very obstinate that I want to use R only. Though I could have paid 2000 rupees and buy, buy smart PLS for one month and done everything. But I wanted to take a longer route <laughs> because my obsession with R was very high. And today, wherever in India I can speak on R, it's all because of the rigor that I went put it into put it into into my thesis. See again, no uh, number of publication will not decide the, the decide your quality as a person. But of course, it matters. I'm not deciding it. But ultimately, how learned you are also matters. I I see a lot many people they are very good publications, but but they don't have the convincing power or they don't have the ability to speak and put their points. That's a different argument. Publishing, they, they cannot be a shortcut. You should publish or perish. That's the motto. Okay. Okay. Uh, coming to the first uh, few slides on co correlation for uh, reflective construct and uh, formative construct. Uh, uh, co sorry, covariance. Uh, instead of covariance, since covariance is an unstandardized uh, uh, uh -huh. can we use uh, uh, when the uh, construct See, in first a... of all huh, okay see first of all felix sir covariance correlation and regression all okay. these are one and the same now just for sake of saying i said covariance and it's better to go for see standardized covariance is correlation just you see but when, when i say covariance it is correlation only you simply just calculate okay. the square root of covariance you'll get the correlation no right, so just for the huh. can this Statement be correct, sir. If I'm saying like uh, uh, correlation uh, can be partialed out when the construct that is influencing the um, manifest or uh, indicators are removed, then the uh, correlation between the uh, manifest uh, yeah. variable. See, it, it means to say that, see, parent constructs or latent constructs are causing indicator. So let's say you keep the indicator and remove the construct. So correlation will be zero. See, this is a theoretical argument. This is the th academic argument. Actually, <laughs> see, first of all, uh, Felix G, it is indicators that is used to calculate what construct. Construct, nobody knows. We measure indicators and indicators is used to cal calculate the constructs. Then we see this constructs is having a very high correlation with the indicator or not. Getting? First of all, indicator is used to calculate latent construct. Then this latent construct is used to understand the correlation between the between the uh, manifest variables. So if you remove the latent construct, correlation will be zero. It's an academic argument. It's an academic argument. Yes? Okay. Anybody uh, else? Third. third. Uh, 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 Felix, go ahead, Felix. Uh, I just forgot. <laughs> third and fourth questions are there. Uh, the, well, sir, you gave an anecdote that uh, for your uh, organization, organizational citizenship behavior, OCB, uh -huh. uh, when you uh, used the theoretical uh, uh, constructs and uh, you uh, created the framework and uh, collected the data. Later yeah. on, when you, uh, when you locally interacted with the sample, they said that none of the uh, constructs are being uh, uh, really used by them. No, no, out of see, out of OCB, three items which were not applicable to that industry. So maybe my pilot testing or pre-testing went wrong. See, oh. it's, it's fair enough to admit it. And and by the way, there is a global consensus that. that when you enroll in a PhD, you are learning a research. So uh, once you collect the data, and then you can't go back. You can't go back. So now you understand that what was the problem. So three items in my OCB were not relatable to that industry. And that's why their loadings was lesser. So their, their, their loading, the lambda value was lesser. I understood this later. And after interacting with also post facto, so I came to know that which item Nikal Dena Chayeta. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, chalo, we'll take one last query and then we'll wind up for today's session. I'll upload the recordings. Yes. Hello. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, ah, I, have developed, uh, uh, I have developed uh, one uh, model which is related with the actually theoretically what we say ki, uh, occupational. Uh, uh, stress and uh, organizational culture. Uh, this is, uh, I, I wanted to study related with that along with the leadership style. So okay. according to theory, leadership having impact on the organizational culture, right? 
Yes. But uh, when we consider the uh, government engineers, uh, uh, right, uh, who are working uh, in the PW department as well as uh, in the, uh, uh, I discussed with this, the, related with this topic with the so many class one officers. So I came uh, to know that because of their organizational culture and occupational stress, their leadership quality get hampered. Yeah, yeah. So it's other way around, reverse causality. Mm -hmm. Reverse yes, yes. yes, it is a reverse. Absolutely, it is. Uh, so um, I thought that ki, uh, we should develop such a model that in uh, at the time of recruitment, we came to know that if uh, because of all such parameters, if uh, at the time of recruitment, if we come to know that whether the person who is giving the interview uh, is uh, able to or uh, bear that particular stress and there will not be change in a leadership quality while time being because of the organizational so culture. First, see, see, first of all, Dr. Gandhali, you know, there is no standard technique available to measure a stress level in somebody's interview. You can't measure. You see, uh, there is always a type 1 and type 2 in recruitment. Either a wrong person will be selected or a right person would be rejected. So first of all, it's a very tall claim to make that uh, if you stress test the person in the interview stage the later the person is not going to withstand stress and is going to impact culture it's a very tall claim to make very you know very ips officers they they commit suicide is officers commit suicide don't you think they, they they have withstood so much of stress in their preparatory stages no uh things doesn't work this way dr gandhali but again no forget about models try to find out uh, actually uh there is one uh Oh, Fred Fedler model in OB. Just explore. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Gandhali, there is one uh, Please, textbook. I'm noting down, sir. Uh, so, uh, there is one standard textbook in OB by Stephen Robbins. In that, there is a chapter yes. on leadership. And in that, there is one leader by Fred Fedler. I say, kuch theory hai. just check in Stephen Robinson's book. And he is not talking about any model. He simply says, under which circumstances a person is going to be successful. Okay, he has decided some metrics. See, first of all, no. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm a very strong critic of self. I'm very strong. Though I'm teaching self, because this is what the where the market is. But I'm a very strong critic of self. Sam is nothing but finding correlation between the constructs. Mere is yeah. And I'm very strongly against self. Uh, again, it's a uh, people will criticize me, but uh, I am per se Sam chic. Kuch naya bolo to Sam use karo. When you're finding correlation mm -hmm. between psychological capital OI and OC, you have not spoken anything new. There is no novelty. But okay, if you sir, read sir, this sir. Fred Fiedler's research on leadership, he has something different. He has told leverage when he gets leverage and leverage he doesn't You see, in aided institutions, in government jobs, leader is not much more private mein leader is not much more In private, mein context support karta hai. public mein context nahi support karta hai. Yeah. Yeah, so it is the context. Context is always a moderator. In in when you, whenever you use SEM, whenever you try mm -hmm. to bring a moderation, actually you try to explain a new thing. Because under what circumstances the relationship is going to increase or decrease. So moderation model can be a lot of good publish. Because there is a boundary condition in which situation may leaders or culture relationship intact. Hoga. Okay, sir. Okay, got Dr. it. Dr. read that Fred Fiedler model, if I'm pronouncing sure. it. Sure, sure, it's sure. Stephen Robbins leadership ke textbook, it will be better in context. Mein jara mere se. Uh, main dekh lungi, sir. Definitely. Okay? Oh, by the way, somebody was saying speak in English only. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. We'll take, okay. Shall we call the day? We'll meet tomorrow then? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Sir, regarding okay. non-linear... Uh -huh. Ah, ah. Go ahead, go ahead. Somebody is asking. Uh, uh, most of the natural uh, phenomena or uh, in nature's phenomena in social science, it is non-linear only. Is there any uh, uh, technique or application for uh, measuring that? Sir? Yes, it is Instead there in PLS SEM. Yes, it is there in PLS SEM. And apart from PLS SEM, there are non-linear models which you should run. In fact, econometrics may people use non-linear models. There are there are non-linear models available. In PLS SEM, we will check whether there is linearity or whether there is non-linearity. We will check. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Hope to see you soon. Uh, let, let's meet tomorrow then. There are three chats and thank you. Thank you.
ओके ओके थैंक यू सो चलो रिकॉर्डिंग यू विल गेट इट हां ओके बाय ऑल ऑफ यू ओके गुड नाइट थैंक यू सर गुड नाइट गुड नाइट